testing. One, two, one, two, one, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, two. One, two.
morning, everybody, and we're very welcome to the Subway Under 16A Girls All Ireland Schools Cup final in the National Basketball Arena in Tamil Park in Tala between Skull Cree 3 from Port Leash and Holy Fate from Clontarf. Port Leash on the ball with May Phelan. Looks for Ava Griffin, tipped out by Elizabeth Black for Holy Fate. I'd like to also welcome uh, Andy Gill, who's alongside me. Andy, how do you see this one going? Yeah, I think much like yesterday, you know, the first moment's going to be very nervous in the arena. Some of these players have not played here before, so just about really getting an early touch of the ball and, and you know, run your offense and get a good look at the basket. Yeah, that was um, me failing there, just putting the ball out. So it's going to be end line ball with Aaron Fitzpatrick to inbound for Skull Crease 3. Both teams going to be a little bit nervous at the start. Yeah, we're, we're those dreaded turnovers again. But I'm sure they'll, can't, they'll, they'll uh, settle down when the nerves stop. Ball goes inside to Byrne. Back out to Aaron Fitzpatrick. Shot is missed. Again, Byrne follows up. Gets the offensive boards. She's going to go to the line for two. First foul of the game is on number 11, and that's Maeve O'Shea. And it's going to be two shots for Amy Byrne. Burn. This is the first. Amy's on your development panel, I believe. Yeah, uh, that's Abby. right. Yeah, yeah. She's a great kid. A lot of athleticism. Gets up and down the floor really well. Makes the second. I actually went to school with her dad, Ivan. So uh, a early. tough guy who, who played a lot of basketball when he was younger as well. Yeah. Early pressure from Tom Tariff. O'Shea. Uh, yeah, double dribble called by referee Sarah Deegan. Going to be sideline ball for Skull Crease 3. Sorry, Andy, I was cutting you off yeah, a little. Yeah, no, you know, good, good strategy there, early pressure, and the uh, result was a turnover by Holy Faith. Fitzpatrick to Phelan. Phelan drives baseline, kicks it to Byrne. Byrne, outside to Griffin. Griffin, back to Byrne, to Phelan, to Byrne. Portish moving the ball pretty well, Andy. Yeah, yeah. Great pass inside by May Phelan. Tough, tough, tough shot, that, tough shot, though. A lot, yeah, lot of pressure. Elizabeth Black. Looks to the corner. Nice corner shot. Rebound taken by Phelan. Puts the ball forward to Alva Griffin. Griffin on the fast break. Misses the shot. And it's Power Cassidy now for Holy Faith. Yep. Elizabeth Black. Another girl on your panel, Andy? No. No? Did not on this one, no. So Power Cassidy for three, misses the shot. Foul is called. It's going to be a foul on Amy Byrne. It's going to be end line ball for Holy Fate. I'm sure Coach Westbrook is looking for his, uh, for his team to settle down and run, run some offense, get a good look. Black with the shot, misses it. Aaron Fitzpatrick pushing the ball right down the middle of the floor. Yeah, good aggression there from Fitzpatrick, running in the open court. Draws a foul from Neve Kenny. It's going to be end line ball. First substitution of the game is coming in with Kim Clark coming into the game for number 10, Neve Corey. End line ball for Skull Crease 3. Fitzpatrick finding it hard to get it in. That was good pressure again from Holy Fate. Once again, we're seeing some, uh, some pressure from Skull Ree. O'Shea passes it inside to Clark. Tied up, jump ball, and it's going to be a holy faith end line possession. Once again, though, we saw the benefits of early pressure from Christ Ree there, though. Power Cassidy to number 11 is O'Shea. Back inside to Power Cassidy. Kicks it out to number 22. That's Neve Kenny to Black. Again, Power Cassidy to the basket, makes the score, it's going to go to the line for a little bonus. Nice drive, nice finish, Andy. Yeah, good drive against uh, Christ Rees 2-3 zone. I mean, people don't sometimes don't think that, uh, you know, penetration against the zone, but it's an effective strategy, and we saw that uh, in that excellent drive there. And it was May Phelan who picked up her first personal foul. 
So free throw is made. Score, 5.37 to go in the first quarter. Turnover, stolen. Power Cassidy looks to try and get it to Black. Black comes up with the ball. Black to Power Cassidy. On the baseline drive, nice spin move. Nice finish. Five points for Power Cassidy in a very quick period of time. 5.15 to go in the first, and it's five points to one in favor of Clontarf. Rebound is tied up. This one's going to go to Skull Crease 3. Yeah, Alice Dunn doing a good job on the offensive boards. Yeah, good drive by Mayfield in there, but got to finish with your left hand. Aaron Fitzpatrick to inbound. Screen comes across for Amy Byrne to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick drives baseline. Unlucky there, just stepped out of bounds. Coach Christian with a 2-2-1 zone press, it looks like, Andy. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, Fitzpatrick. It certainly put some full court pressure. Kenny. Out to Power Cassidy. Inside to O'Shea. O'Shea on the drive. Nice left hand finish from O'Shea. Once again, we saw the benefits get the ball at the high post. Penetrate through the gaps of the zone. Here's May Phelan. Ball is tipped away. Phelan tries to get it back. Foul comes in yeah. on Skull Crease 3. Bit, bit of an unnecessary foul there. They had them. That foul's had... going to be on Alistair. And as we go with 4.35 to go in the first, the score is Holy Faith 7, Skull Crease 3 1. So we're back to the action again. Skull Crease 3 and from Port Leash and Holy Faith from Clontarf. Probably a timely uh, timeout there from the from coach. Yeah, uh, Pat Critchley has been around a long time. He's um, coached at this level and he's also a, an all-star hurler. So great sportsman and uh, knows the game very well. Yeah. Again, a, you know, excellent drive. Just got to finish. Tree from Phelan misses the mark. And it's going to be number 22, and that's Neve Kenny. Fortunately, need double dribbles. Going to be out of bounds for Portlaoise. Well, certainly, um, you know, the early pressure from Cry 3 has brought some benefit. Now that they really need to be a little bit more aggressive in their 2-3 zone. They're finishing on the offense as well, Andy. Yeah, needs to be, yeah. Uh, had some, to smarten up a little bit. Had some good looks. Fitzpatrick looks inside to Phelan. Phelan off the dribble. Travel called by the referee. Double team when she got the ball inside there. Made it very difficult for her. Yeah. I mean, Maeve my, my can do that, but not obviously against a double team. Zone press. Black just dribbles straight through. It goes to the basket. Elizabeth Black, great score. Puts her team eight points ahead, nine points to one. Fitzpatrick, ball stolen away. Power Cassidy on the drive. Power Cassidy with a little, little shot, misses it. Foul comes in on Power Cassidy. It's going to be end line ball to Port Leash. 3.31 to go in the first. Skull Crease 3 1. Holy Fate Lantarf 9. As the substitution comes in, Elva Griffin leaves the game and Sophie Delahunt comes in. So with 3.31 to go, Holy Fate Lantarf 9. Skull Crease 3 Port Leash 1.
we're back in the action. Skull Crease Reed with the ball, and Aaron Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Referee says she stepped over the sideline. She's going to give the ball back to Holy Faith. Yeah, I, I did think that coach was going to set something up then, half court trap wise. I certainly did that and uh, got the turnover. Kenny, back out to Kenny, looking at the tree, gives it up, drives to the basket. Nice to show for Black. Power Cassidy. Power Cassidy to the corner. That's going to be. O'Shea, three-point shot from Kenny is missed off the mark, but Elizabeth Black comes up with the rebound. Black on the drive. Foul is called. It's going to be two free throws for Elizabeth Black. That's the second foul on Maeve Phelan. They don't want Maeve getting in foul trouble, Andy. Yeah, she's she's a key player for uh, Christ Ree, and it's not going to help them if she's sitting on the on the bench. Black misses the first shot. Skill Crease Reed now also on 14 fouls. Misses the second. Rebound taken by Phelan. Phelan looks to pass to Della Hunt. Ball is taken back by Kenny to number eight, who is uh, Kim Clark with the turnover. Aaron Fitzpatrick on the drive. Yeah. Travel Re ball. Really need to. Set some offense up, Christery. So leaving the game is Kim Clark for Holy Fate, and coming in is Neve Hederton. Zone press up again. Elizabeth Black. There's the first trap they've got. Yeah, that's good, a good steal. Good steal. That was better on the defense. More pressure on the dribble. Certainly when. Uh, Black reverse, there was a good trap there. Again, now it's really the other end that Christ Rhee, you have to show some composure. It's Patrick, ball tipped away, but she gets it back. May Phelan for three. They just need a score, coach. Didn't yeah, and anything will do. Great hustle from Amy Byrne there as the ball goes to Sophie Delahunt. Unlucky with the shot. This is Power Cassidy with the ball. Power Cassidy passes back inside, comes across to Elizabeth Black. To Kenny, to back to, to Power Cassidy, to Kenny. Cross court pass to Black. Black for the long two. Makes the long two. 10 point game, 146 to go in the first. Great pass inside by Amy Byrne. Alice, yeah. That's a great score for Alice Dunn. Gives Port Leash their first bucket of the game. Yeah, just what they needed. That's a great way to break the press. Ball didn't touch the floor once. Lay up the other end. That's a great score from Holy Faith. And a great basket and finish from O'Shea. Again, the steal at half court. Elizabeth Black. Kenny to Black. Black. Again, drives at the zone, kicks it out to Power Cassidy for the jumper, and the shot is missed. Rebound taken by Dunn, May Phelan with the ball. Phelan attacks the middle of the zone, pulls up, makes the pass to Amy Byrne. Good defense again from Holy Faith. As Kenny attacks the dribble down the floor, kicks it out to Elizabeth Black. Black on the drive, and the shot misses it. Great rebound again by Amy Byrne yeah. to Alice Dunn. Ne really need to show three. some composure now. Yeah, it's just a little bit all over the place in a minute, coach. Yeah. We've got some subs coming in for Holy Fate. Elizabeth Black and Elizabeth Black and Neve Kenny taking a rest. And number four, who is on your watch, and number nine, Katie Doyle coming into the game. Alice Dunn to Fitzpatrick to Phelan. Cross court pass to Byrne. Delahunt. To Phelan, putting a lot of pressure on, on May yeah. Phelan. And they, they certainly, um, Holy Faith have picked her Maeve out as a threat. As soon as she gets the ball, she's being double teamed. Referee is asking about the shot clock there. I don't think he realizes that he's counting the shot clock. There's no shot clock in, been used. Ball is turned over and it's Power Cassidy. 
corner shot from number 25, Neve Hetherton. Pushes the lead out to 12 points. One second to go. No shot taken. So the end of the first quarter, Holy Faith Clontar 15, Scope 3 3, Port Leash 3. So here we go, start of the second quarter. Uh, Skull Crease Reed trailing by 12 points. What do they need to do to, to make sure they stay in this game, Andy? Well, the first thing is, um, as they've done, they've come out of the zone, which probably is a good strategy at the moment. And secondly, they really need to show some uh, composure offensively. That's a good Great steal. steal from Byrne. As uh, Phelan attacks the basket, pulls up for the little floater and looking with a shot. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good look. The four is going to be... Yeah. Again, again um, you know, Chris Ree have shown some good pressure in the front court, but unfortunately in the first quarter, the, you know, their 2-3 zone was very, very passive. Turnover, and it's going to be number 11, O'Shea, with the ball for Clontarf. To Power Cassidy, Power Cassidy on the drive. Left-hand finish, misses a shot, gets her own rebound, puts it up again, gets two points. Largest lead of the game for Holy Fate is they've gone out to 14 points, 17 points to three. Yeah. Aaron Fitzpatrick on the drive. Again, you know, the, the, the first penetration is a good penetration, but really Holy Faith has stepped in defensively and it needs some, you know, they need to make an extra pass. Jump ball there, Aaron Fitzpatrick seemed to hit her head as she came down as the subs come in. Walsh and number nine Kate Doyle Katie Doyle leave the game and coming back in is Elizabeth Black and number 22 Neve Kenny it's going to be a jump ball referee's just making sure that uh, Aaron Fitzpatrick is okay it's going to be an end line ball for Skull Crease Ree Sophie Delahunt passed it in to May Phelan out to Fitzpatrick to do with this one. Unlucky on the shot. Delahunt contesting the rebound, just tips it out, and it's going to be a front half ball. Full court, man to man pressure now from Port Leach yeah. coach. Just again, you know, it, it looked like a good shot, but it was a you know tough three point shot. And again, some good some good pressure. Now it's whether they can sustain it in the half court. Extra player, extra pass. Shot goes up, rebounded by Dunn, kicks it out to. Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick on the drive, tried to dish it. Good defense from uh, number 25 is Hederton. It's Emily Black with the ball. Foul is going to be called. Foul is going to be called on Alice Dunn. That's going to be Alice's second foul. Going to be a sideline ball for Holy Faith. Need to get some scores up, coach. Yeah. Basco pass to Kenny. Kenny looks inside to Power Cassidy. Nice spin move. Kicks it back out to Hederton. Hederton with the shot and the score. 
Whereas Port Leash are fighting for every score, it seems that Clontarf are getting yeah, they, easy they, looks and good shots, yeah, coach. They, they, they've, uh, they look a very well-structured team, Holy Faith. You know, that, that was really an example then of the, of the difference between the two teams at the moment. You know, the, there's nothing wrong with the initial penetration. But it's way too early in the offence, and the, off, the defence is completely set. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough look against a, against a good defensive team. Yeah, I mean, they're a well-drilled outfit. Well, Cassidy to Black. Looks across court, last touch. Kenny is going to be a Scott oh. Reese ball. I mean, I admire Christ Reed, you know, they're, 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 they're staying with their principles in the full court man. And reality is, as I said, it's, they've really hurt themselves on the, on the offensive end. It's Patrick from way outside. I'm looking on the shot, and here is Elizabeth Black. Passes to Kenny. Kenny makes it unlucky on the save. And uh, looks like Skullcrease 3 are going to make a substitution. Checking into the game for the first time is number two, Sarah Fleming. Sarah Fleming comes in for Sophie Delahunt. 5.48 to go in the second. Skullcrease 3 3. Holy Faith on tariff 19. Yeah, you know, 16 points. It's a, bit, it's, a, it's a mountain to climb, but if you can get some kind of parity. It's just getting a couple of offenses in a row where to get a score, Coach, and yeah. getting them settled down again, you know? As Power Cassidy kicks it outside to Kenny, back inside to Power Cassidy. Nice move from Power Cassidy and looking on the shot. As Amy Byrne comes up with a block, and it's Elizabeth Black, dishes it, makes an easy pass, easy score for her teammate, and that's number 11, Maeve O'Shea, with the, with the latest basket. Aaron Fitzpatrick. Fleming from outside misses the shot. Yeah, Again, that's, that's Black comes up with a rebound. Outlet pass to Hederton to 21, and that's Howard Cassidy for another layup. 20 point game as Coach Critchley calls a timeout. 4.50 to go in the second quarter. School Grease Street 3, Holy Faith on Tariff 23. Here we go, back to the action. And it's Aaron Fitzpatrick, again off the dribble, looking for Phelan, Phelan to Byrne. Byrne looks inside again for Phelan, but the pass is intercepted by Elizabeth Black. Yeah, really need to concentrate on their fundamentals about passing the ball to the free man there. Ball back outside, that's a good drive and dish from number 22, and that's Neve Kenny. It's gonna be an end line ball for Clontarf. Just need to get their half court set. Need to move the ball a little bit. In the yeah, offense, coach. They're, they're oh, just also it, that you know they've been very guilty of uh, passing the ball to the opposition. In the great backdoor pass and an easy layup for Maeve O'Shea. As Maeve Phelan brings the ball up to Fleming. Fleming to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick to Phelan. 
Phelan kicks it out to Byrne. Byrne, unfortunately, had stepped out of bounds. And that's going to be uh, a tariff ball again. But that was the first time they moved the ball a little bit, Coach. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. You know, I, an early shot. It, it, they moved it and got a bit of bit of momentum. I'd rather that they, uh, t you know, that they get under pressure and shoot in the last four seconds. There's Black outside to Kenny. Back inside to Black. To Power Cassidy. Power Cassidy kicks it outside to Kenny. Back to Black inside. It's just great team basketball with a great score from Maeve O'Shea. You know, the, the ball movement is superb, Coach. They, yeah. They're getting, yeah. They're hitting, seeing the open player and, and, and making it, easy layups. Fitzpatrick gets one to fall. Much needed basket from Christ Ree there. Need to get a stop here as the yep. drive comes in from O'Shea. Alice Dunn does well on the boards. Couple now, of offenses in a row. Get a bit of momentum in, Coach. Yeah, definitely need to... Need to move the ball, perhaps try and get May Phelan posted up, isolated. She's got Elizabeth Blackgardner, uh, known from Elizabeth Sisters. They're great defenders, so yeah, you can see that Elizabeth is no different. Yeah, that that again, you know, some composure. That's off two passes in the offense there. Yeah, too early, too difficult. Mark Cassidy to. And Elizabeth Black. Back to Carl Cassidy. Elizabeth Black. Off the dribble and the spin move and the little hook. Maeve Phelan comes up with a great rebound. Phelan down the floor to Amy Byrne. Kicks it out to Aaron Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick looking to get the pass away to Phelan. Back to Byrne again. Good pass to... Fitzpatrick looks inside to May Phelan. There's that little post you were talking about, Coach. Yeah, I, I, I think she was a bit unlucky there. A better position. Definitely think she got fouled. You got five seconds on the shot clock now. Coach Critchley was looking for that foul as well. But, uh, you know, uh, it was a better look from uh, Christ Ree there. Again, it was more ball movement, Coach. Yeah. Five seconds. Got to get the shot up. Three, two. Phelan with the tree, misses it, shot clock violation, going to be end line ball for Holy Faith. Coach Westbrooks calls a timeout, 2 minutes 24 to go in the second quarter. Holy Faith on tariff 27, Skull Crease report leash 5. Back in again, and it's going to be uh, Elizabeth Black. Out to Kenny, looks inside to O'Shea. Misses a shot. Hederton with the rebound, takes the shot. Misses as Aaron Fitzpatrick comes up with a rebound. But again, we did see the example of the difference between the two teams. You know, that was a, some ball movement and a, and a really good look inside. Elva Griffin to Aaron Fitzpatrick. We, sh we should take our hat off, though, to uh, Holy Faith's man-to-man -man defense. You know, they, they've done an exceptional job. Absolutely. Uh, like, every year, Holy Faith seems to be here, either contesting 
you know, senior or cadet All-Ireland finals, and, and a lot of that has to go down to, to Coach Westbrooks and, and the fantastic yeah, job he's done there. Run, runs a great program. So Emma Crumlish is now going to come into the game for number 11, Maeve O'Shea, takes a rest. Re really important again to, to get some good offense. May Phelan to Alistair. Phelan does great on the offensive rebound. Kicks back to her in the corner. She looks to take the drive. Kicks it outside to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick driving again. Nice pass this time out to Amy Byrne. Unlucky on the shot. Yeah, but that's going to be again better offense. Uh, as of what, what they've Holy Faith have done. They've really packed the middle and, and taken away any penetration. Substitution for Holy Faith as Neve Kenny leaves the game and Anya Walsh comes, checks back in. One minute 18 to go in the second. Still 3 3 from Port Leash. 5. Holy Faith on Tariff 27. Power Cassidy. Power Cassidy's been superb today, coach. Yeah, she look, looking an explosive player in the open court. Again, but Holy Faith's man to man defense just shows you that, uh, you know, if you play it properly, that you can certainly deny it uh, internal penetration. No need to go to that zone. Uh, it's the old saying as well, coach, defense leads to offense. You can see that in this yeah, game, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Black kicks it out to Power Cassidy. Baseline jumper. This girl is, is having a fantastic game at the moment for her team. May Phelan, ball is touched out by Hederton. We're going to have a substitution for Holy Fate as Kim Clark is going to check in. And checking out is Neve Hederton. 31 seconds to go in the second quarter. Amy Byrne gets it in to May Phelan. First time she's got an open look. on looking on the shot as Elizabeth Black has the ball. Coach was telling me before the game that Elizabeth was carrying a little bit of an injury so she mightn't play in the next game. Um, yeah, she could, she could probably sit on the bench at the moment. Black with the shot, rebound comes in again from Power Cassidy. Eight seconds left to go. Elizabeth Black, nice fake and nice drive. Good, great finish with the left hand. That's going to make the score at half time in the under 16 girls A final. Uh, 33, Holy Fate, Contarf. Five, School Crease, Reed, Port Leash.
So here we go for the second half. Halftime score, Holy Fate from Clontarf 33. Skull Crease 3, Port Leash 5. Holy Fate wearing red, Skull Crease 3 in green. Now Cross 3 gone straight back into that 2-1-2 uh, two, two zone. Black out to Power Cassidy to Kenny for 3. Three-point shot from Kenny. He's going to stretch the lead out to 31 points. Fitzpatrick, open shot for Alva Griffin. Probably just saw the difference between the two teams there. Yeah, when you're making shots, the confidence is there as well, coach, and that, that's a big thing, you know? Yeah. Elizabeth Black. Power Cassidy swings it to Kenny. Back to Power Cassidy to Black. Black baseline drive and dish as Fitzpatrick comes up with a steal. Fitzpatrick going to the basket. What a defensive play by yeah. Power Cassidy there, coach. Did a great job staying in front. Looks like not, she made a hurt her ankle though. Yeah, not reaching in. She's calling for subs straight away. Coach calls a timeout. 7.05 to go. 36-5 in favor of Holy Faith Lantarf. So back to the action again. Third quarter, 7.05 to go. Aaron Fitzpatrick out to May Phelan, to Byrne, to Griffin. Ava Griffin back to uh, Phelan, who gives it to Byrne. Byrne on the drive. Rebound, great rebound by Alice Dunn, and it's going to be Phelan pulling up with a free throw line. Kicks it out to a wide open. Aaron Fitzpatrick for three for. Skull Crease 3 brings Aaron's tally to six points. Again, a much needed score from Crease 3. But it's the difference, coach, the difference of moving the ball. You know, yeah. they moved the ball very well and they got the open shot. As Elizabeth Black looks to get a score and does so for Holy Fate with number 10 for Holy Fate, Neve Curry, checking into the game. Griffin was checked by Kenny, going to be a foul call. Foul is on yeah. number five, and that's Elva Griffin. It's going to be a sideline ball for Clontarf. L a little bit lucky then, I think, Need Kenny. Could have been called for an offensive foul. That, that hand came shooting out. Referee Sarah Griffin tying her lace. Sarah Deegan, I should say. Elizabeth Black with the ball. They really need to get more aggressive in this zone. Allowing ball movement. Curry with the shot. He's missed by, being rebounded by Dunn, and it's May Phelan. Phelan, nice Euro step. Nice layup. First time we've really seen what Maeve can do, coach. Yeah, she's been really well uh, guarded by Holy Faith. And Kenny looks back inside to Walsh. Back to Kenny, to O'Shea, and it just comes out to... Elizabeth Black for the jumper, misses the shot. O'Shea comes up with a rebound. Oh, yeah, it was a travel. Slight travel there, yeah. yeah. Again, yeah, we've seen the weakness of the zone against the uh, offensive rebound. As soon as it rebounds towards the free throw line, these two, three zones can break down. I so, know that to my cost. 
Neve Curry exits the game, and coming back in is Neve Hederton for her holy faith. Nice backdoor pass from May Phelan. Nice cut, though. But really, you know, Christ really need to move the ball and allow May Phelan, Amy Burns, some space to penetrate to the basket. And that only comes after uh, good ball movement. Zone presses back in by Coach Critchley. Ball comes to Elizabeth Black. Little floater from the free throw line. Another score for Black, another score for Clontarf. And the score is five minutes to go in the third quarter. 40 for Clontarf and 10 for Skull Grease Reef. Ball comes out to Aaron Fitzpatrick. Another three pointer for Aaron Fitzpatrick. Better shot that time, coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, e even with some only three or four passes, it was a good look, good open shot. Ball goes to Hederton. Hederton with the shot. Misses. Rebound by Dunn to Amy Byrne. Now, no, you know, let's. Real need for some Cross composure. To Fitzpatrick. That's better from Fitzpatrick. Good drive. Draws the foul. It's going to be a. End line possession for Skull Grease Reef Port Leash. Referee actually changes and gives it sideline possession. I think Coach Critley, you know, at the moment, is just looking for parity. Not, don't worry about the score. Phelan drives to the basket. Good pressure. That seemed to come off Port Leash player. It's going to be an out of bounds for Clontarf. Yeah, the coach has got to set his, his goals for the second half and just. You know, be realistic about what they can do in, in, in the second half, yeah. coach. Just don't, you know, you're just looking for parity, chip away, and then you know you see what happens in the in the fourth quarter. Sophie Delahun checks back in for Elva Griffin. As Kenny gives it back to Elizabeth Black. Great basketball family in Dublin. Elizabeth comes from. Yeah. Jody and her close her dad, who is a. Fantastic coach in, in Ireland for many, many years. Ken Black as Aaron Fitzpatrick with a fantastic move, fantastic finish. Yeah, Aaron Fitzpatrick's not giving up here, coach. She's really stepping up to the mark for no, her team. She's Last set. couple of offenses. I think when you know when when you get Fitzpatrick in the open court in that situation, then that's a great strategy. It's it's when the half court offenses uh, defense is set by Holy Faith, and when she's penetrated to penetrate really early, that she struggled. Unlucky on the free throw as Elizabeth Black eventually comes up with the rebound. Pressure from Fitzpatrick and from Dunn. The lane opens up for Black. It's checked by Phelan, but the follow-up is good from number 11, Mabel Shea. Ball out to Fitzpatrick for another three. Unlucky with the shot. But, you know, again, there was a, a good cut there by May feeling inside. You know, let, let's see if he can get the ball inside, get an easy two-point look. May feeling he's up her third personal foul, 3.58 to go in the third. 42-15 in favor of Holy Fate from Taft. Black with the ball, Karen. Elizabeth Black. To Hederton. Looks at the top of the key. Good interception by Sophie Delahunt. Uh, Aaron Fitzpatrick gives it to May Phelan. Out to Delahunt. Delahunt she takes the shot. That's unlucky with the shot. Yeah, again, you know, maybe the shot's open, but after one pass really early in the offense. Elizabeth Black. Here goes Amy Byrne. Amy Byrne driving to the basket. Amy Byrne, unlucky on the, the shot again. Good hustle defense from yeah, both. Yeah, they never gave up. That's probably a situation with Amy Byrne where she just needs to go and take a power layup, you know, jump two-footed on the on the key and throw a little pump fake. Difficult so, layup under pressure. Emma Crumlish now has re-entered the game uh, for Neve Hederton. And it's going to be an end-line ball for Holy Faith Lantarf. Elizabeth Black to number 11. That's Mabel Shea. Uh, tough path by Holy Faith. Probably didn't need to make that pass at this stage of the offense. They got a nice backdoor basket off their last out of bounds. Coach, I wonder if they're looking yeah. to do the same again. Not this time as it comes in to number 14, Crumlish, who misses the shot. And it's going to be May Phelan on the drive. She goes to the basket. Nice move by Phelan. Great finish by Phelan. 
Black sees Crumlish in the open court. Can't get the pass to her. It's going to be a Skull Crease three ball again. The key really is both Fitzpatrick and Phelan. You know, they've got that ability to penetrate. But in the open court, yes. But it, it's this situation here where they need to try and fashion some kind of offense which takes advantage of that. You saw, it, saw a classic case there. You know, re really early to try and penetrate. So it's across to Walsh. Walsh with the shot. Misses. That came off Aaron Fitzpatrick. It's going to be out of bounds for Holy Fate. 2.33 to go in the third. 25-point game. Elizabeth Black looking back to the corner. There's the shot. That's another excellent out of bounds play from... I'm sure that's from the coach's notebook right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, very good. And obviously it helps when you finish. But, you know, lots of time for Neve Kenny there. Neve Kenny in a nice shot. Sophie Delahunt. Ball is picked off yeah. by Kenny again. But, there, you know, just, just hold. There we are. Hold the ball. Pass goes inside uh, to Mabel Shea. And that's another fantastic score from O'Shea. But, again, it was about, it was about what Neve Kenny did there. You know, held the ball. Waited for... Just a little bit of patience. Yeah. Again, it's Walsh on the drive. This is the shot. Again, Kenny crashing the boards. Going to be a jump ball this time. And it's going to be a scope three three ball with 144 to go in the third. Really got to take uh, take care of the ball in the offense here. Christ free. They've had 12 points in this quarter, coach, you know, considering the five in the hole of the first half. Yeah, they've done, they've done a better job. Difference being they're moving the ball a little bit better, I think. Here's Fitzpatrick. Uh, ball comes out of her hands, and yeah. Neve Kenny comes up with it. Gives it to Crumlish, to Elizabeth Black. Out to Walsh, to back to Black, and swung to the other side. Back to Black again, top of the key. Good look at the three. Rebounded by Alice Dunn. Aaron Fitzpatrick with the ball. Fitzpatrick drives to the basket, kicks it out to Byrne. Back to Fitzpatrick. Now it's done with the shot from the top of the key. Nice shot. It's unlucky. It's a good rebound from O'Shea. Gives it to Elizabeth Black. 56 seconds to go. Third quarter. Good defense by Sophie Delahunt there. And this comes to O'Shea, and this shot that goes up and is rebounded by Alice Black as Aaron Fitzpatrick takes off again to Sophie Delahunt. Open look. Good shot from Delahunt. I've seen her score a few more of those outside my front door, Coach. She's yeah. friends with my, my daughter. The ball goes backcourt. You know, let go out of bounds. 29 seconds to go. I think, you know, the, the key, as you can see in the, in the Price Reeves offense there, you know, May Phelan makes a pass. She's probably looking to get the ball on the weak side, and she's not been able to get that. So... Mabel Shea steps out and in comes Neve Hetherton for the last 29 seconds. So Elizabeth Black with the ball. Black gives it inside to Hetherton. Hetherton squares up, misses the shot. Uh -huh. Rebound comes to Port Leash. Here goes Aaron Fitzpatrick again, straight down the middle of the floor. Great job, Fitzpatrick, unlucky on the finish. Amy Byrne with the offensive board, kicks it to Delahunt. Delahunt is fouled, and she will go to the line with 9.9 .9 seconds to go in the third quarter. See, I, I think in the open court, you, you, that that's a, you know, that's a good, strong penetration. And it was a good follow-up from her teammates as yeah, well to, yeah. to make sure that if she did miss, there's going to be someone there. You can't fault the effort from Christ Ree. So, Della Hunt at first. Unlucky at the, at the first shot. This is the second also is Elizabeth Black and an unfortunate foul from Sophie there. It's going to be a sideline ball for Clontarf. 8.8 .8 seconds to go in the quarter. Who do you think takes the last shot, coach? Uh, well, they, they ran that great play for Neve Kenny, so uh, either, either. But are they, they've got lots and lots of offense in their locker. Kenny, two seconds on the drive. Well, you, you, you got the option, right, coach? Yeah, Just don't look you with the shot. So, end of the third quarter. Still Crease Report D17, Holy Fate, Lantar 46.
close. Start of the fourth quarter. Pontarf in possession. And it's going to be Neve Kenny who gives it to Elizabeth Black. Black kicks it to the corner for Walsh with the shot. Ball comes out as far as O'Shea who comes up with the rebound. I guess Coach Critley, you know, just be looking for some respect on the scoreboard now. I think the game is probably gone. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. I like the way that Skull 3-3 are just not giving up. They're, they're going to fight to the, to the very end, Coach, and try and probably come up with their, their own goals the coach gave them at halftime. Yeah. They fail in cross-court pass to Aaron Fitzpatrick. We've seen her do that before. Yeah. That's three trees from Aaron Fitzpatrick. Again, you know, the, the, the advantage of some ball movement and a, and a shot at a good time in the offense. You know, she was... She was free, her feet were set, and we saw the benefits. Elizabeth Black, straight to the basket, off a great dribble and great crossover. It's another basket for Elizabeth Black, who's been outstanding so far in this game. May Phelan to she burn. We're really looking to get the ball, reverse the ball, yeah. And here and goes it. Shot comes from May Phelan this time. Amy Byrne with the good save and step back in again to save again. Shot clock is gone though, unfortunately. 2-1-2 two, two now from, from Coach Westbrook. He's, he's probably just trying to rest his team for the next yeah, game as they yeah. go back to back, Coach. Uh, I would imagine a number of these players would be in the under-19 squad. Also an opportunity to, to practice a different strategy. Elizabeth Black to Walsh to... Kenny, who gives it to O'Shea. She nice spin, nice drive. And May Phelan does really well there on the defensive boards for her team. Was it 2v1 there? Uh, had O'Shea seen the, the little dump inside to Hederton? She was open for the shot, coach. Yeah. yeah. But again, you know, the advantage of penetrating against the zone was seen. Here's that backdoor pass again. That's the second time they've done that. Comes up with the easy layup for Neve Kenny. Aaron Fitzpatrick. Drives to the basket. Yeah. Again, Foul you know, that's a, it's an incredibly difficult shot to execute against that half court man to man. Absolutely, coach. And she certainly got the ability to penetrate, but just, just pick a moment. Five fifty seven to go. School crease three twenty. Holy fate Clontarf fifty. And it's Elizabeth Black to O'Shea drives and gets another two points. Great score. Good, yeah, good, good fake and drive. Ball touched out by Walsh, actually intercepted, and it comes to Neve Kenny to Elizabeth Black. Elizabeth Black getting her offense set, looks to Kenny again inside, nice kick out to Hederton. Hederton with the shot is missed and rebounded by O'Shea. And there's another two points. Christ restaying in that 2 3 zone. May Phelan cross court to Amy Byrne. Looks at the tree but decides to give it to Phelan. Ball goes out of bounds. Going to have a couple of substitutions coming in for Holy Faith on Tarf. As Hederton comes out and Walsh comes out and into the game comes Crumlish. And number nine, who's going to be Katie Doyle.
five minutes to go in the fourth. 34 point lead for Holy Fake Clontarf against Gold Cruise Free from Port Leash, 54 to 20. Elizabeth Black with the ball. Pass is intercepted by May Phelan. Phelan, nice pass inside to Fitzpatrick. I'm looking at the layup. Crumlish yeah. comes up with a rebound and kicks it to Black. You going to say something, coach? No, yeah, good pass and, and penetration, but just inability to finish there. But so, again, some nice defense there from Price Free. Elizabeth Black on the ball. Great backdoor pass, a great block shot from May Phelan. As Amy Byrne goes to the basket, loses the handle. And that's going to be an out of the bounds to Clontarf with 4.21 to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, again, you have to admire Price 3. You know, they, they've stuck to their task, still playing as hard as they did in the first minute. Okay. Good pressure from Amy Byrne. I'm lucky she just yeah. kind of overdid a little bit, coach. But that's you know, a, she, yeah, she's still working hard. Bit of a reaching. I think the thing also they've had they, they have trapped the ball well, but uh, you know they really haven't had their interceptors in the right position to get that extra pass. So Fleming and Byrne take a break, and Delahunt and Griffin come back into the game for Port Leash. <coughs> I believe the great Jimmy Ward is downstairs with uh, big Jason Colleen watching the game, coach. How do you think they've been enjoying this one? I, yeah, I think it would have been nice for a bit, bit of a bit of a closer game, but you you got to admire the work that uh, Coach Westbrook's done with his squad. Well-drilled outfit, excellent man-to-man, -man and some great offensive structure. Now it's done getting the deflection there for Fort Leash again. It's going to be an out of bounds. They certainly uh, certainly share the ball. Katie Doyle's inbound for Clontarf. A little bit easier this time. It comes back to Doyle. Doyle, nice drive to the basket. Unlucky with the shot. And again, tipped out by May Phelan that time. And it's going to be Doyle again to inbound for Clontarf. As the crowd stream in for the next game. Yeah. Now a great crowd. Great support for both schools here. Crumlish. Ball tipped away by Aylva Griffin. That's the thing about schools basketball coach here. It's one of the times when this gym is absolutely packed and there's the atmosphere is just electric. There's a shot from Katie Doyle. Katie Doyle comes up with two points. 3.45 to go in the fourth quarter. 36 point lead for Holy Fate as the ball goes out of bounds and two more subs gonna come in for uh, Clontarf, that's Claire Owens and Laura Owens coming in and coming off the floor is Crumlish and Katie Doyle just after scoring her basket. Great to see her teammate uh, Brona Power Cassidy just come up the, the bench and you know give a high five to everybody. I think that's important as well, coach. Yeah. yeah. May well be needed in the, in the in the next game. Shot comes in from Owens and it's missed and rebounded by Sophie Delahunt. I know it's something we started to do this year with my team's coach. That when the player comes off the floor, you stand up, you give him, give him or her five, so you respect what they've done on the floor, you know? Yeah, no, she, she did very well when she was on the court. 15 is owns, and travel is going to be called. 3.14 to go, 36 point game. Aaron Fitzpatrick. to Aylva Griffin. Griffin with the shot, nice shot. Foul is gonna be called this time on Sophie Delahunt and it's gonna be sideline possession for Holy Fate. Uh, substitution comes in and O'Shea is gonna step out and in comes Walsh and it's Neve Kenny to inbound. I'm sure Coach Westbrook will be thinking about making certain he gets as many players in his squad into the game in this last three minutes. I'm sure he'll pretty sure he'll get them all in if he can. So again the foul comes on Della Hunt. She's picked up two quick fouls in a row. It's gonna be her third foul. Sideline possession for Clontarf. Elizabeth Black comes off the screen, passes up the open shot, gives it to her teammate who is owns sorry, Kim Clark. Clark with missed shot. May Phelan passes to Aaron. Fitzpatrick back into Phelan, but intercepted by Kenny. Yeah. Elizabeth Black again. Kenny coming up with a good defensive play, coach. 
Yeah, it was a tough pass in there, a little bit loopy. Really have to slam that pass in there hard as you can. I think that's two free throws for Dontarf now as Port Leisure passed the penalty, which means uh, everybody is uh, going to go to the line for Clontarf down the fouls. That's a fifth foul there for number 14. And that's Alice Dunn and Amy Byrne comes back into the game for her. Elizabeth Black misses the first shot. And the second, a good rebound from Aaron Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick using her pace down the side of the floor. Unlucky with the dribble, just came off her foot a little bit. But Amy Byrne comes up with a steal. Great pass from Phelan to Fitzpatrick. Nice shot. Again, Elizabeth Black comes up with a rebound. Black. Great heads up pass to Owens, who is intercepted by Sophie Delahunt as Griffin passes to Aaron Fitzpatrick. That's a tough shot. Yeah, tough, tough, tough shot. Really need, you know, finish the game strong, play with some composure. You got to love that effort, though, coach. Yeah. Two minutes and two seconds to go. Her team down by 26 points. Elva Griffin goes diving halfway yeah. across the floor to get yeah. the ball. There's no, there's been no lack of effort from from Christ Reed there. Timeout, two minutes, two seconds to go in the fourth. Skull Creek Street 20, Holy Faith Lantar 56. Two oh two to go. Skull crease three from Port Leash versus Holy Faith from Dunkirk. As the shot goes up, both teams have emptied their benches now for the last couple of minutes. Yeah. Get everybody running an all out of final, which is a nice thing to have said to have done, Coach. Yeah, that's a, it's a great memory. There's a great shot coming in from number eight, Kim Clark. Connolly to Burke. Ball is stolen away by Neve Kenny. Kenny to Walsh. Great hustle back from Connolly, who passed it off to Healy. Just important Ingram. now that you know Christ Free and both teams now get a good get, get a good look. Neve Kenny. Lots of changes here in the last minute or so. It's going to be tough to stay up with the numbers and the, the yeah. names, coach. Yeah, all, all will be a little bit hectic. Here's Clark again for the jump shot and misses it. Ball is going to be a football and it's going to be three more substitutions coming in for Clontarf as Neve Kenny leaves the game. Number 13, Kira Owens leaves the game and number 15, Laura Owens leaves the game. Coming in, Kate Doyle, number nine, and number 14, Crumlish, and number 10, who is Neve Curry. You're doing a great job Healy. there, Martin. Keep it, keeping up with all the substitutions. Uh, try my best. <laughs> Don't know if we got them all, coach. That's going to be out of bounds off number seven for Port Leash, which is Leah Dowling. And it's going to be 43 seconds to go for Clontarf. We are going to be crowned the Subway Schools Basketball Under 16 All Ireland Girls Champions for 2016. 33 seconds to go. Emer Healy. Just see, see if there's an opportunity for one of the players to score. To Connolly, to Healy. Ball is stolen away by Walsh. Foul comes in on Healy. 
22 seconds to go. This situation, I always tell my teams just to, if we've got the ball and we're we're up by more than a point, just keep the ball. Yeah. Don't shoot it, but it, obviously free throws now, but. Well, also, the, you know, the, the players just coming off the bench, the adrenaline's going there. It'd be great for them to score in, a, in at the arena. There's uh, Anya Walsh with a score. Misses the second, it's going to be a sideline ball, 22 seconds to go. Sideline ball for Port Leash. Leah Dowling passes into Emer Healy. Healy cross court pass for Connolly. Connolly back to Dowling. Dowling has the ball taken away and it's going to be on your watch. On your watch. Pulls up, looks for the shot, and makes the shot, and that's the way to finish the game for Holy Faith. So at the end of the fourth quarter, All Ireland champions are Holy Faith on Tariff. On the scoreline is Go 3 3 20, Holy Faith on Tariff 61. Thank you very much, Andy. Great job. Yeah, thank you, Martin.
So here we go with the Subway Under 19A Girls Schools Cup Final between Holy Faith Clontarf and Art School Ratangan. Uh, Andy, this is going to be a, an interesting game. How do you see this one going? Well, yeah, I think I think you know you. Holy Faith are well aware of the threat of Claire Melia, and she is the one for Art School Ratangan. How do you think they're going to combat that threat, Andy? It's, it's going to be tough for them, yeah, we all know. Yeah, Claire I, I, is such a fantastic player. I think that they're going to be very cognizant of her abilities, and you're going to see an awful lot of double teaming today. So it looks like a 3 2 defense coming in from Rathangan. Yeah. And uh, on the ball, we have Sorsha Power Cassidy, and 13 is Maeve McDermott to Power Cassidy with a jumper. This is the shot. Amelia comes up with a rebound. I don't think that's the first time we'll be saying that no, today. No, that's a fairly often. Nice pass outside to her teammate for the first score of the game. And the first score of the game comes from Anya Nash. Yeah, you can see some of the attributes that Claire Amelia's got there. Defensive rebound, quick dribble up the middle, and a, and a great outlet pass. Tough shot taken. Ball comes back out to number 12 for Clontire for number 12 is Ashley Carberry as Melia passes inside yet again, making her teammates look good with, with these great passes, and Neve Burke comes up with a basket. Timeout straight away from uh, Jerome Westbrooks. 8.59 to go, 0-4 in favor of Rattangan. Going to first, quick timeout from Coach Westbrook's there, Andy. Yeah, make some early adjustments. Ball movement is going to be important again as the ball comes to number 12, and that's going to be Carberry. Back to Carberry to Sorsha, Power Cassidy. Back out to Power Cassidy. She makes the drive, puts up the shot. Great shot over Claire Amelia to come up with her first two points for Holy Fate. Tough try. Yeah, tough try, but again, you know, the benefits of penetrating against the zone. Nash to Melia. Melia will dump inside, and there's another layup for number. So, so Claire hasn't scored, but she's taken three rebounds and, 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 and got three assists. That was Kellyanne Scully coming up with a bucket that time as Power Cassidy comes, kicks it out to number 25 who is Kira Curran. This is number 12, and that's Ashton Carberry. Interception by Melia. Melia going to the basket. You're not going to stop running away. Takes the shot. Ball comes out of bounds, and it's going to be a holy fate ball. Yeah, they did, did a good job there, challenging the shot, making it a tough, tough layup. Park Cassidy. With the tree. Hits the three. One point game. Power Cassidy has come to play today. That's her first yeah. five points for her team. As I look down at the bench, I see Coach Westbrook is going to bring in four substitutions in one go. Andy? Did a great job, yeah. Amelia. Yeah. Two points, Claire Amelia. Certainly revving up to be quite a game. Looks like it. Sorsha Power Cassidy. Two. Number 13. That's Maeve McDermott. Back to Power Cassidy for three again. Misses yeah. the shot, Anya Nash comes up with a rebound. Nash drives down the floor, been guarded by Power Cassidy. Gets it to Sinead Byrne. Sinead Byrne back to Nash. Again, they're gonna look to Byrne. Byrne 
Passes inside to number 14, and number 14 is Neve Burke, and Neve's going to go to the free throw line as we see our substitutions getting ready to come in for Holy Faith. So, coming off the floor, our number 12, who is Ashton Carberry, number 25, Kira Kern, number 13, who is Eve, uh, Maeve McDermott, and number 9, who is Tiffany Brockman, as... Uh, on the line, we've got number 14, and that's Neve Burke. Burke misses the first shot. That's, Check. Ho that's holy faith there. They've stacked, uh, stacked that starting five with guards, and certainly people like May Crean got the ability to shoot the three. Burke makes the second one. The only player to stay on the force was Sorsha Power Cassidy. She's joined now by her, yeah. her sister has come into the game. Um, and that's going to be Brona Power Cassidy, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit as... Sorsha Power Cassidy with another three has our team's first eight points. Sinead Byrne to Nash. Nash been guarded by Ruth Fennel. Fennel does well and tips the ball out of bounds. Certainly Rathangan are going to have to be cognizant of that threat. May Crean has come into the game also for Holy Faith, as has number 14, Alison Connolly. Pass goes inside to. Claire Amelia, Claire is going to be fouled. It's going to be a, an end line ball. Referees for today's game, of course, two of our long standing referees, um, Paul Dempsey and Mr. Joe Robinson. So Nash to inbound. Looking to the roll for Claire Amelia. Yeah, good it's a out, good pass. Yeah, good out of bounds. Good pass. And, Going to send Claire to the line for, for two shots. Something that we, we, we that I use a lot, pass the ball to the screener, opening up, and that's certainly what happened on that play there. Media makes the first shot. And makes the second. So, 6.31 to go in the first. Holy Faith, Clontarf, 8. Arsko Ratanga, 11. Here is... Number 14, that's Allison Connolly with a three. That's three threes in her first 11 points for, for Holy Fate. It's going to be a foul up the floor as the pressure comes on, coach. Yeah, that's, that's a good strategy there. I mean, one, thing, what, one thing for sure is that people like Claire Mealy are going to play an awful lot of minutes in this game. Looking for the roll and the run to the basket. Just got to get it in and take it back maybe for Claire. Goes to Kellyanne Scully. Ball taken away by Sorsha Power Cassidy. Cassidy passes ahead. Nice jump stop, nice shot. Rebound comes to Claire Amelia. Amelia to Sinead Byrne. Sinead Byrne looks inside, but it's taken away by Connolly. Yeah, really, Connolly to Power Cassidy. Really looking for Rathangan to show a little bit of composure there, but good, good pressure there by Holy Faith. Power Cassidy to her sister, and this is going to be May Cream. What a nice spin move. Referee Joe Robinson calls it as a travel. And timeout coming from our school Rotangan. 5.48 to go in the first. The score is 11 points each. Ireland Schools Cup Final, sponsored by Subway. Anya Nash to inbound to Claire Melia. Melia. Good, good pressure though by Holy Faith. 
Comes back to Melia. Melia with a jump shot. Misses the shot. Rebound comes out to May Cream. Cream looks to Root Fennel. Fennel dribbles, passes back outside to number 15 with May Cream. And Anya Nash comes up with a rebound. Clear Amelia to Nash. Ooh. Got away with one there, I think, coach. Yeah, yeah. Kellyanne Scully loses the ball. Foul is going to be called on Kellyanne Scully coming over the back. It's going to be an out of bounds for Holy Faith. Last two times where Fangen have come up the floor, they've lost possession. It's something that I'm sure uh, their coach is going to be talking to them about the next time out. Sorship Howard Cassidy to 14, who is Alison Connolly to Ruth Fennell. Fennell back to Connolly. Connolly off the dribble, passes to Brona Power Cassidy on the spin. Foul is going to be called. Foul is going to be called on Ratangan. And it's their number nine, who is Sinead Byrne. And it's going to be two free throws for Brona Power Cassidy. Again, you know, over the last two days, we've spoken about that kind of foul. You know, it's, it's something that the coach Donovan will be disappointed. They did a good job, made a difficult, tough shot. Power Cassidy makes the first. Yeah, you certainly got to think when you play defense for so long and, and then it, it's just, it, it's, it's, I don't know if it's naivety or what it is, but a foul like that at the end is a killer for a team. Yeah, it's that reach in again, isn't it? You know, just stay tall and make it a difficult shot. Amelia to Nash, to Burn, Burn, looking for three. Misses the shot, great rebound. Kellyanne Scully out to Nash. Nash on the shot, misses the shot. Rebound taken up by Connolly. Yeah, you're probably going to need to play a little bit more offense than that for Rathangan. The Cassidy sisters teaming up there as Claire Amelia comes off the dribble. This kid's really got everything, coach. Yeah. There's the drive, and she's going to go to the line yeah. for two. Again, you know, no need, no need to foul her. Then, you know, they did, a, they did a good back, good job tracking back. Had plenty of players in the key. R really, they've allowed her to get onto the charity strike quite easily. And they're also now in the bonus situation with five team fouls with four minutes to go. So could be a long quarter for them, coach, with, with free throws to come. As media makes both. And a substitution coming in for Holy Faith. As Mabel Shea checking in and Brona Power Cassidy checking out. Sorsha Power Cassidy. I watched this girl play down in the under 20s down in Cork. She was she was exceptional down there in a, in a fantastic game against yeah. Brunel. Three point shot goes up from uh, Connolly. And it's ball back with Claire Amelia to Nash. To Byrne. Inside to Amelia. Just can't be stopped yeah. in there, coach. Yeah. That's a fantastic score. Good pass from Sinead Byrne as well. Great score. I mean, that's just, you know, as you see, the with the five that Holy Faith have got at the moment, they're very guard orientated and, you know, Claire's got a high advantage. Good, strong body position. Goes to the stripe, makes the free throw, five from five from the free throw line, nine points in total for Amelia, out of her side, 16. Sorsha Power Cassidy, Connolly, Connolly with the open look, misses the shot. And again, we talked about the last game. Quick shot, coach. Yeah, After quick shot. You know, that, you know we, with people like Brona Cassidy and May Preen out there, you know, they do have a, a, a good three-point shooting threat, but they need to run the offense. Ball put over the top, goes inside. And it's lost by number 14, Neeper, as Connolly takes off on the dribble, loses possession. It comes to Claire Amelia. Amelia to Nash, to Sinead Byrne. Janae Byrne, great cross-court pass yeah. to Scully. There's some good ball movement. Back to Amelia with the shot and misses the shot. The rebound comes to Anya Nash. Back to Amelia. 3-10 to go. 16-13 in favor of our score. Yeah, great, great backdoor pass. Yeah. Great pass, great cut. Great layup from Sinead Byrne. Sinead Byrne could be that second player that Ratanga need to, to step up to the mark, coach. Yeah, certainly. Ball comes outside. That's going to be a nice shot from Ruth Fennell. I think it was. Yes, it was. Brings her team back within three points. And Anya Nash to Claire Amelia. Amelia back to Nash. 
I think Holy Faith really need to try and deny Claire Melia the ball out on the perimeter. No, yeah, another fantastic great cut. pass inside and a good cut from Sinead. Yeah. Certainly a great cut. Going to have substitutions coming in for Holy Faith. Great, great cut from Sinead Byrne there. Just couldn't finish. Deborah Seeley and Sarah Malone check in as Ruth Fennell and number 15, May Crane, step out. Uh, substitutions, coach. Uh, not looking at too much coming from Rathangan. He's sticking to his five for nearly the full quarter. And, you know, Coach Westbrooks has got players in and out. That'll tell towards yeah. the end of the game, surely. O'Shea with the shot misses it. I think, so, I think there's some good depth, though, in uh, the Holy Faith squad. Comes into Anya Nash. Anya Nash on the drive. Misses the shot. Rebound comes up. And that's going to be number eight, Malone. Malone gets to the corner and is swung to the opposite side by Connolly. Sorsha, Power Cassidy to Malone. Back to Power Cassidy. Power Cassidy with a huge tree. Unlucky in the shot yeah. as Kellyanne Scully comes up with a rebound. Pro probably a step too far for her. Full court pass from Claire Amelia. The ball goes out of bounds. And it's going to be sideline possession for Holy Faith. 1.48 to go. Our school are tanging 18. Holy Faith 15. Our school are tanging wearing blue and Holy Faith in red. Malone. Up high to Seeley. Back to Seeley. Back to Malone. To O'Shea. O'Shea off the left hand. Misses the shot. Seeley gets in for the rebound. Great. Sorry, that's Malone gets in for the rebound. Goes back out to Sorsha Power Cassidy. Off the dribble, looks to drive. Block shot from Claire Amelia. Amelia passes to Sinead Byrne. Yeah, this Byrne, is great pass inside to Kellyanne Scully. Sorry, coach, you cut you off. Yeah, it's tough for Holy Faith to penetrate. Travel violation called. Going to be a sideline ball to Arsko Ratangan. One minute, five seconds to go in the first quarter. They're going, to, they're going to definitely need to find a way of uh, drawing Claire Media out from underneath the basket. Ruth Fennell checks back in and gives Sarsha Power Cassidy a break. Uh, she's had a great first quarter, coming up with eight points for her team. Ball goes to Anya Nash. Nash with the shot, misses, but Sinead Byrne is there on the rebound. And the putback puts her team up by five points, 20 points to 15. 54 seconds to go in the first. Yeah, great offensive rebound there. Fell to Seeley. Ball, corner, three point shot, yeah. two point shot called by referee Joe Robinson and Allison Connolly comes up with another two. So Claire Amelia, 38 seconds to go. Been faced by O'Shea to Nash. Corner to Kellyanne Scully. Kellyanne Scully for two. Five point lead yet again. Yeah, that was a uh, great job there. I mean, Holy Faith took the initial shot away from uh, Claire Melian, but Well, she just noticed the double team at half court and passed it right over it, coach, and yeah. got the easy shot out of that. So, comes back out to Malone. Malone to Seeley. Up high to Connolly. Connolly for three. Misses the shot. Rebound taken by Anya Nash. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Melia with the hook shot. Not going to happen. End of the first quarter. Holy Faith on tariff 17, Arts Goal Ratangan 22.
the start of the second quarter. And it's our school Ratanga looking to retain their title from last year and with a scoreline of 22 to 17 against uh, Holy Faith from Clontarf. Sorsha Park Cassidy is checked back in. His Connolly out to Fennel for three. Misses the shot. Good offensive work on the boards by number 11, O'Shea, as it comes back to Sorsha Park Cassidy. Looks to go baseline. Pass comes across, back into Fennel. Nice pass to Sorsha yeah. Park Cassidy yet again. That's, uh, you know, from we, what we saw with the under 16s with Holy Faith, that has, is a hallmark of Coach Westbrook's team. They pass the ball well. And there's another, know, another, another great assist from Claire Melia. You know, Claire's got four or five assists so far in the game, but the passes she's given her for layups for her teammates. It's making it very easy for them. What would you think, Coach? Yeah, she's, uh, you know, it's a great way of passing. She comes up with a steal there as well. So it's Melia been guarded by O'Shea. Comes out to Burn, Burn, Burke trying to get position inside. She's got the position. Fortunately, loses the ball. We're going to have a substitution for Holy Faith as Sorsha Car Cassidy comes out of the game. And in comes May Green. And uh, Coach Westbrook doesn't look too happy at the moment. Uh, but, you know, she does attract, um, you know, double teams, Claire, and therefore, you know, the. That means to say that there's inevitably a free play and she's been able to find it. Connolly for three, misses the shot. Rebound as Sinead Barnes steps out of bounds. So May Crean is going to pass in the ball. Crean to Fennell. Fennell back to Crean. Back to Fennell. Nice drive, nice shot. Rebound again to Yeah, good, Claire good hustle there by Holy Fight. That was uh, Mabel Shea who was uh, making Claire Amelia work for that. The arrow, unfortunately, is going to be with uh, Arsko Rathangan. So it's, uh, even though the, the good work was done, she's still going to lose the ball. And it's May, it's uh, Claire Amelia with the ball. O'Shea, she doesn't want to reach on her. She's going to reach on her, she's going to foul her. Yeah, it's a good... Good double team there by Holy Faith. As Burke comes up with a loose ball, gives it to Nash. Nash to Claire Amelia, top of the three-point circle, wide open. Only one thing going to happen there, coach. Yeah. Big three-point shot from Claire Amelia. Brings her tally to 12 points for the game. Ball with Fennel to Cream. Cream for three. Misses the shot. Amelia again with the rebound. Looks up the floor. There's Sinead Byrne. There's the layup. There's a 10-point difference. Coach Westbrook straight to the table for a timeout. 7.42 to go in the second. Holy Fate 19. Our school rats hanging 29. Here we go again, we're back in the action. There's Kern, who passes out to Crean. Crean drives and dishes. It's going to be a foul on number nine, Sinead Byrne. That's Sinead's second foul. 
Doesn't need to pick up anymore. No, she's, a she's an important player for our school, Rathangan. So, Sorsha Power Cassidy to up five to uh, O'Shea, back to Cassidy who goes baseline. Kicks it back out to O'Shea, wide open three. Tree is not going to fall. Fantastic yeah. rebound again by Claire Amelia. Yeah, I think and she's. Yeah. I'm surprised the foul wasn't called there. Burke. Burke travels. Yeah. And, uh, was a travel. Probably was a. Probably was a foul down there on Claire Amelia though. Well, what are they going to do to to stop Claire? I mean, she's got five assists. She's got 12 points. Game's 13 minutes old. Three point uh. shot comes in from Sorsha Power Cassidy. You know, bringing her tally to 13. Yeah. Great job. But again, when the, when the ball's out of Claire's hands, you know, Holy Faith can definitely pressurize the other players. I think the key really is that, you know, every shot that Claire takes has got to be a tough shot. Here's Power Cassidy, kicks it out, comes to Fennel for three. It's a three-point shootout at the moment, coach. Yeah, they've, they've uh, shown some great ability to shoot threes. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's something like five, maybe six threes out of their total of 25 points yeah. has come from, from outside the arc. It, 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 I mean, it shows some sharp shooting from Holy Faith. Also, the fact that, you know, they, they have a lot of difficulty trying to get the ball inside. Timeout and 6.38 to go, 25 Holy Faith, 29 Art School Ratangan. to go in the second. Holy Faith on tariff 25. Arts go at 29. Yeah. And uh, ball comes to Bona Power Cassidy out to Root Fennel for another three. Shot is missed this time. Kellyanne Scully comes up with a rebound. It's going to be a jump ball. Ball's going to be in the arrows in favor of Holy Faith. This Rathangan sticking with that 3 2 zone to keep Claire very close to the basket. Obviously, it does give opportunities for the outside shot. Pass comes in to Brona Power Cassidy out to number 25, and that's Kira Kern. The shot is missed. Ball comes off Claire Amelia, and it's going to be an end line out of bounds to Holy Faith. Sorsha Power Cassidy to pass the ball in. And it's Kern. Kern on the drive, kicks it to the opposite side. Lovely shot from Brona Power Cassidy. 29 27, six yeah. minutes to go in the second quarter. But again, you know, great piece of team play by Holy Faith. Draw Claire away from the basket and then make the great bounce pass. So we see Maeve O'Shea coming back into the game for Brona Power Cassidy. A little bit more aggressive on Claire that time. They, they stepped up the floor and, you know, she, she got hit that time and she, she's got to make sure that, that she doesn't allow them to get into her head. Yeah. I mean, you know, she should be used to that by now. She's definitely... Uh, one of the finest talents we've seen in a long time in this country, yeah. Coach. Nash to Burn. Burn. Baseline drive. Steps out of bounds. And it's going to be end line ball to Holy Faith. That's that's the problem with our school, though. You know, if they don't get her involved early or as part of the offense, they don't, they don't have the offensive firepower without the corner shot. Misses. And it's going to be Kira Kern who put that one up. Another substitution coming in. May Kern stepping out and Alison Connolly coming back into the game. Ball comes in to Melia. Melia looks long, full court to Sinead Byrne again. Sinead Byrne on the drive. 
Misses the layup. Tries to get her own rebound, but Kern comes up with a pass to Sarsha Card Cassidy. Pulls up for the jumper. Misses the shot. Again, Mealy on the rebound to Anya yeah. Nash. Yeah, they, they really need to keep some composure now. Kellyanne Scully, good job. Back out to yeah. Melia, to Byrne. Byrne looks inside for Scully. That pass wasn't really on. Oh, Coach tough, Lewis. tough pass. Good defense again played by Holy Faith. You know, again, Claire was, was involved in the first aspect, but not really at the end there, which is when, when you need her to touch the ball. Wide open shot for O'Shea. Misses the shot. Melia with another rebound. Great dribble. Yeah. Pulls up for three. Misses the shot. Ball is loose. It's on the floor. And Neve Burke dives on the ball along with uh, Maeve O'Shea. But the arrow is in favor of Rathangan this time. Sideline possession for for uh, Rathangan. End I mean, line possession. Claire's certainly got that range, but you would like to see her get a little bit closer to the basket. You know, she'd be really, really tough to stop. And they've been very aggressive on her now as well because yeah. the referees will have to keep an eye on that as the game goes on. As the ball comes in to Melia. Melia on the drive. Fantastic move. Unlucky. Gets her own rebound. Puts it back up and she's going to go to the line yeah. for two free throws. Great effort from Claire there. You just, you have to stop, not worry about the ball and really get a body on her. Tough to do. Checking in Maeve Crean and Maeve McDermott, Ruth Fennell and Kira Curran checking out for Holy Faith. Claire Mealy on the line with two free throws. Her team leading with two points. 29 to 27. Media makes both. Brings a tally to 14. Corner three from number 13. Melia with a brilliant rebound. Out to Sinead Byrne. Sinead Byrne on the drive. A little bit far away, but good help from Onion Nash on the weak side. As Sorsha Power Cassidy takes the ball up the floor. Great pass inside to May Crean. Crean on the layoff. Great shot from May Crean. Brings the game to 31-29 in favor of Arsko Rathangan. Really, it just came from Arsko Rathangan. You know, really quick shot. Burke goes inside to Claire Amelia. Claire Amelia to Kellyanne Scully. Scully looking for Burke, but the ball is stolen. Stolen away by Maeve Connolly. Connolly out to Sarsha Power Cassidy. Maeve Green. Green off the dribble, drive and pass. Comes back out. Cassidy wide open for three. This is the shot. Burke with the rebound. Ball comes out to Sinead Byrne. Byrne again on the drive. Yeah. Foul is called this time. Probably count herself a little bit fortunate there. That foul comes in on number 14. That's Maeve Connolly. He's going to send Sinead Byrne to the line. You can see that outlet is on every time that yeah. Byrne seems to be leaking out. And, and of course, Claire is able to spot that pass and able to make that pass, which is more important. First free throw is good. 3.35 to go. Holy Fate, 29. Second free throw is good. Arts good, Ratangan, 33. Sorsha Power Cassidy. Takes it down the middle, looks for her own drive, and dishes it outside. Great drive and shot. It was unfortunate from Maeve McDermott and Claire Amelia. Again, looks down the floor to Sinead Byrne. Sinead Byrne, again, is that reach in when you don't yeah, need to reach in, I, coach. I, I, that's a, that's almost a timeout. You, you know, Coach Westbrook. There, no need to, no need to foul in that situation. She was in a really tough, tough spot to make that shot. Yeah, like they've done so much good work. It's just it's 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 hard on them to uh, to make that foul and send Sinead to the line. Sinead makes the first. And the second. And it's going to be a substitution for. Holy fate as Maeve, sorry, Alison Connolly takes a break and Deborah Seeley comes into the game. I wonder if she's a daughter of Damien Seeley, who used to be a fantastic player up here. Yeah. Been down from Waterford for years. Here she is with a wide open shot. This is the shot. Excellent rebound, Maeve Crane to O'Shea outside to Sarsha Power Cassidy on the drive, kicks it out to Seeley. Seeley. Cross court to McDermott. McDermott off the dribble and the shot. Makes the shot. Brings it back to a four point game. Tough shot, coach. Good tough, make. Tough. 
You might have had a word with her if she'd missed, but fortunately it went in. Melia to Burn. Burn off the dribble, gives it to Scully. Claire Melia again, hand in her face. Yeah, referee is going to have a word here. You can't actually put your hand in a player's face. You've yeah. got to get her hand out of face. If she does that again, I'd say she might get a, a technical foul on that coach. Just, I think that, you know, the mantra with Coach Westbrook, though, is, you, you know, you have to be aggressive. Maybe he'll take one foul against her for that. At least, they, they, you know, they're really showing an aggressive tendency with her, which is what you need to do. Maybe McDermott checks out. Drew Fennell checks back in. Steel comes from 15. Meg Green off to Sarsha Power Cassidy. Power Cassidy with the layup. Crowd coming back into the game for Holy Fate as it's down to a two-point lead for Atangan with two minutes and 18 seconds to go. 35-33 in favor that looks like a foul to me coach yeah i mean they did again they did a great job trapping her but then unfortunately a little bit too aggressive and it's going to be free throws every time the fouler now fouled anybody from her and claire is going to step to the line again um that foul was called on root fennel i mean it's a good uh, it's a good policy by coach westbrook they're double teaming out in the uh, yeah, but you don't want to put Claire on the line because no. you know what's going to happen after. And Melia makes both, stretches the lead out to four points again. Sorship Power Cassidy for Holy Faith to O'Shea inside to Crean. Crean kicks it outside to Seely. Seely for two. I'm looking in the shot, that ball comes off for Amelia, and it's going to be an inline ball for Car Cassidy. Haven't seen this backdoor inline play in this game so far. I wonder will we see it at any stage, coach? Yeah. yeah. Shot comes from Fennel. This is a shot. Def Ooh. Definitely crashing the balls are though, highly fight. You know, that's ball's given up to Nash. Nash loses it out of bounds. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a holy fate ball. Cardinal Sim really what you know, one turnover after another turnover. Really just keep hold of the ball and secure possession. Sarah Malone comes into the game in place of May Crean. And Kira Curran checks back in instead of Deborah Seeley. A lot of quick substitutions coming from Coach Westbrooks. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's got, a, got a deep squad. Cassidy. Mr. Shot gets her own rebound. Goes underneath. Block comes in from Melia. Melia, strong on the dribble. Gets the ball over half court. Looks to Sinead Byrne. Sinead Byrne yeah. nearly has it stolen away, but gets a great pass away to Burke. Then a check comes in from Malone. Good block from Malone. It's going to be an end line ball for Art School Ratangan. One minute 23 to go in the second. It's about when Art School, you know, once Claire Melia's delivered the first pass, it's about getting the ball back to her. Sinead Byrne did well to change it to her left hand there and get the shot away. As Nash has the shot, misses it, and Sarah Malone comes up with a rebound. Malone to Fennel, down the floor to O'Shea. Looks inside to Curran, kicks it out. Good ball movement as Sorsha Power Cassidy gives it to Curran. Unfortunately, called for the travel. So it's going to be Orskut with hanging ball yet again. So we've got that early pressure from Holy Faith again. Melia. Got to get it over to half court. Yeah. Three seconds. Picks up her dribble. That's better defense from O'Shea, not reaching in, not giving her the foul. Ball comes to Burke. Burke looks inside to Nash. Nash to Melia. Melia off the spin. Tries it with the right hand, doesn't get it. Burke is fouled by Kira Kern. He's going to go to the line for two free throws. The Holy, Holy Faith have done a good job. They pressurized out in the back court, and then she, they Claire Melia didn't. Didn't really, wasn't able to post up deep enough to make that a uh, high percentage shot. So it's Neve Burke for two, misses the first. I think that's possibly the first free throw that Arts Gore and have missed. Steps up for the second, misses the second, breaks the free throw line, so 39.5 seconds to go in the second quarter. Arts Gore and 37. Holy Faith from Tariff, 33. Source of power, Cassidy with the ball. 
Game's panning out exactly as we thought, coach. Yep, and here comes Kern. Melia on the rebound and off the block, off her own block. Play away, says referee Joe Robinson. Uh, Sinead Byrne has the ball tipped away. Comes to Burke, back to Nash. Nash dribbles to the corner, kicks it out to Byrne. 12 seconds on the shot clock, 14 on the game clock. It's clear Amelia, Amelia looking to make the pass. Now she's going to make something happen herself with four seconds on the shot clock. Kellyanne Scully for two, misses the shot. Four seconds, three seconds. Sorsha Park Cassidy. Now we're going to have, yeah. I think the game, I think the shot clock went off before the game clock. That's right. There yeah. was about a two and a half second differential. So I see Paul Dempsey saying two seconds. It's going to be sideline ball for Clontarf. Two seconds on the clock. They're down by four with those two seconds left in this quarter. Basket here would be a big boost going into halftime. Certainly would. I'd look to Power Cassidy maybe for the shot. They've gone to, oh sh again, too quick. Yeah. Referee is, is not having it. He's going to bring it back. He's going to say two seconds again. Somebody's got their finger on the buzzer pretty quick there. It's actually a little bit of a difference in what referee Dempsey is now saying to both coaches that he's going to count to two seconds. He will say when it's halftime. So to get this shot away, what have they got to do? Here's Power Cassidy. He's going to come off for the three and misses the shot. So, halftime in the under 19 a school, sponsored by School School Fund, sponsored by Subway. Holy Faith on Tariff, 33, Art School Rattangan, 37.
Here we go again, second half of the Under-19A Schools Cup All-Ireland Final, sponsored by Subway. And it's Art School Rathangan 37, Holy Fate, Clontarf 33. Uh, Rathangan stayed in the changing room a little bit longer than uh, normal, with a three-point shot coming up huh. from number 15, May Crean. Looks like he had a coach, Donovan had a little bit more to say, Andy. Yeah, de definitely. Uh, I'm sure it's about Claire in the, in the open court and getting trapped, and you actually saw that then where she didn't handle the ball. First foul of the second quarter comes in on May Crean. I uh, just want to say that uh, I made a little bit of a mistake earlier on. I said that Rathangan had won the cup last year. They'd actually won the league. It was Christ the King from, from Cork who won the cup last year in the under 19 a I uh, should have known that considering one of those girls is now playing for me in Carlo and yeah. Kira McCarthy. Great hook shot from. Yeah. But from again, you know, a, a, a double. She was being double teamed, getting pushed out from the low post. So it was a, it was a tough shot. Nash to inbound the ball. Oh, nice pass to Burn. Burn with a nice basket. That's a nicely run out of bounds, and a good finish from Sinead Burn. Stretches her team's lead to six points. Yeah. Sorsha Park Cassidy. Out to Crean. Crean with a wide open three. Misses the shot. Uh, Amelia again with another brilliant rebound. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of shot that make and make. Certainly, the uh, you know the three-two zone that Rathangan have been playing it does give that uh, opportunity. So Rona Power Cassidy is going to check back into the game for May Crean. May has missed her last couple of shots. The so coach going to give her a rest, let her think about it a little bit. And we know we're going to get a. Another good shooter in, in Power Cassidy again. Brona Power Cassidy coming on the floor. Yeah. She, they're leaving that open shot, coach, right at the top of the key. And well, they, with the, with the three-two, they should be able to they should be able to guard against it with the three-two zone. That's Amelia out to Nash, but the, the, the center person on the three-two seems to step back a little bit towards the basket, maybe to give her a bit of help. Yeah. She's not pushing right up to the top of the the free throw circle. Ball goes inside to Amelia. Amelia. Off the spin, left-handed, going to get her own rebound and going to score again. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, Holy Faith did a great job. Coach would be a little bit disappointed there. Made in a tough shot, but didn't keep her off the offensive boards, and she can be a tiger. Wide open tree, Brona Power Cassidy misses the shot. Kicked out to Sorsha Power Cassidy. To Connolly, goes to Lou Fennell. Back to Power Cassidy. To her sister, Sorsha Power Cassidy, for three, misses the shot. Again, Amelia comes up. Like, there's sometimes she gets a rebound, coach. She doesn't look like she has position. She's just reaching over people, yeah. taking rebounds as Burke misses the shot. But just that height advantage she's got over the uh, Holy Faith players. She's got that timing as well. Yeah. She, she just seems to jump at the right time. All, all, almost a foul. Almost. But, no, but not quite. Back to Power Cassidy. Yeah. Four out, one in for for Coach Westbrook's at the moment as Brona Power Cassidy steps into the middle and makes a nice little jump shot. Brings the game to a six-point game, 41-35 in favor of Orsko Rathangan. Claire Amelia on the ball. Both, both the Power Cassidy's have got that ability, you know, good, good shooting. Again, you know, again, probably that's a, a foul. Probably. That's a lot of contact not yeah. to be called first time. I, th I think the first contact was definitely a foul. I, I'd still like to see... Uh, you know, Claire get the ball deeper. She's got a top of the key now. She opens up. Looking for someone to cut for her. As Nash has the ball. Nash inside to Melia. Melia steps back for the jump shot. Nothing but a bottom of the net. She adds to her score. Comes up to her 18 points. Out of her total of 43. As Power Cassidy for the three. Misses it. Not a rebound from Another, Melia. Yeah. Those, those short rebounds. Comes up with a steal. Now foul is called on Sorsha Power Cassidy. That might have hurt her a little bit, but that's good sportsmanship yeah. from Power Cassidy there, picking yeah. her. Pretty, pretty certain that was accidental. Opposition up. We've got a timeout coming for Ratangan, I think. And the score is 43. Arts go Ratangan, 35. Holy fate. Clontarf, 6.38 to go in the third.
6.38 to go, third quarter. Holy Faith in red, 35. Arsko Ratangan in blue, 43. Claire Melia for Ratangan. Passes to Nash to Byrne. Looks inside to Melia. There, there's Melia. that quick double there's team. That easy layup for yeah. Kellyanne Scully. As the double team comes, you've got a wide open player underneath the basket. You have Scully to, makes good on the, on the easy layup. You have to rotate down and take that away. Connolly on the drive. And that's a nice finish. That's a nice finish from Alison Connolly. Claire Amelia. Full court pressure comes on from Holy Faith. And Sinead Byrne drives to the basket. That's going to be a travel violation called by referee Joe Robinson. She's, she's, done that, she, she's done that a number of occasions. Sinead Byrne, you know, one, once you've got that ball over the front court and you've got Claire Mealy there, you really need to get into your half court offense. Sorsha Park Cassidy, oh, that's a nice pass for O'Shea. Misses the shot again. Foul yeah. is going to be called this time on Sorsha Power Cassidy. That's going to be her second foul. Third foul. Yeah, bit of a... 14 foul with 5.45 to go, coach. Bit of a non-foul, really. No need to do that. You're not going to... You know, once you've got the rebound, she's got the rebound. Make Green coming back in for Sorsha Power Cassidy. If I'm, you know, Paddy Donovan now, I'm going to try and get the ball in Claire's hands every time now with that team on, with Holy Fate on team fouls. Yeah. Let her go to the line. Let her make the free throws. You know, win your game that way. But she's... You know, really, they, they, they're they doing a good job. She gets the ball out of her hands, and then she's going to be looking to get the ball inside. Again, dump inside to Kellyanne Scully. Yeah, that, was, that was a much touched. better job from uh, Holy Faith. They rotated down on the free player. And they come up with a ball, and it's going to be Holy Faith ball. And it's Ruth Fennell. Fennell with the ball to make Green. Green off the dribble. Gives it to O'Shea. Yeah, Rathangan gone to a man to man, sagging man to man. 14 is Connolly. Nice kick out to O'Shea for two. Misses the shot. Grown apart, Cassidy comes over the back, tips it out of bounds, and it's going to be Rathangan ball. Don't see Claire passing the ball in as much now, Coach. She no, they're definitely trying to get her out into the open court, and this is this situation here is where they. Sinead Byrne off the spin, drives to the basket. Unlucky on the layup, May Green comes up with a rebound. Yeah. Yeah, this is, they did a good job getting it over into the front court, but really need to um, get into their half court set and get Claire involved. May Green for yeah. three! You, you knew she was going to hit one. She might get going now, it's yeah, only a five it, point game. On your Nash. Like, you know, that, that has been a weakness of the 3-2 zone. Here is Claire Amelia. Amelia outside to burn for a three. Misses the shot, gets her own rebound. Looks inside to Kellyanne Scully. Pass wasn't there. Going to be a substitution for Holy Fate as Brona Power Cassidy comes in and comes out and Sorsha Power Cassidy comes in. And Kira Kern replaces number 11. That's Mave O'Shea. That ha has been a weakness of the uh, Arsenal Rathangan 3 2 zone. They, they've been awfully. Uh, Three, but they're now back into a man-to-man. -man. There's Park Cassidy. Cutting the lead to two points. Park Cassidy with 16 points. Timeout called by Paddy Donovan. Uh, four minutes, 12 seconds to go in the third. All school Red Tangan are 45. Holy Faith Lantar, 42.
Back again, four minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third. Sinead Byrne. Byrne has the ball taken away. Came off the foot yeah. of, uh, I think it was Kira Kern. It's going to be a sideline ball for Atangan. More pressure from Holy Fife. Melia to inbound the ball. Pass to Nash, back to Melia. Melia off the dribble, back out to Nash for a wide open shot for three. Off the glass, doesn't happen. Rebound, Sarsha, power, Cassidy. What a pass to Maeve Green. Opposite side to Ruth Fennel. Fantastic basketball, fantastic fast break basketball. Easy layup. Yeah, super team play from Holy Faith. Three passes, ball to the basket, one point game. On your Nash, ball goes inside to Claire Melia. Melia looking to give it to Scully. Back inside comes from the pass from Nash to Melia. Melia off the drive, she's going to go to the line now. Yeah, that I, foul's going to be called on Kern. You, you're going to get really frustrated as a coach. You've done everything that you need to do there. You, actually, she was triple teamed. So. Yeah, we talked about free throws, you know, I mean, it, this is the first trip to the line. It's two and a half minutes since they've been on four fouls. Uh, Claire makes the first. And the second. 100% from the line so far from Claire Amelia. Brings her tally to 20 points out of the 47 for her team. As May Cream makes a good pass to Kern. Amelia scrapping for the ball. She gets on the ground. Unlucky to get the ball tipped away by Ruth Fennell. Ball comes outside for a three-point shot from Sorsha Power Cassidy, which is missed. Back to Cassidy. She makes the drive on Melia with a little floater. Two points. One point game yet again. Anya Nash. Back out to Byrne. I see that Alana McLaughlin has checked into the game for the first time for Neve Burke. First substitution that uh, Rathangan have made as their Amelia goes to the basket. Good defense from, from Clone then. So, Power Cassidy out to May Crean for three. First time in a while we've had a lead for Holy Fate. Ball comes back to Sinead Melia and on the drive is Burn. Burn misses the shot. Now we've got a foul coming in on number six. No basket on that. That foul is going to be on number six, Anya Nash. Going to be Anya's first personal foul. Team's first foul as Malone checks into the game for number six, Ruth Fennell. Sideline possession in the front court for Holy Faith Fontaine. So we got you back with us now, Andy. Yeah. Technical difficulty. Malone outside to number 14, Connolly. Connolly back to Malone. One more swing, and it's going to be wide open for Power. Cassidy misses the shot. Rebound comes up to Sinead Melia. Fouled, and Sinead, uh, sorry, that's Claire Melia, of course. And Claire is going to go to the free throw line yet again. 2.07 to go in the third. Holy Fate, Clontar, 49. Art School, Ratangan, 47. Two free throws to come. Yeah, just got to got to keep Claire Amelia off the line. This is the first. Makes the second. One point game. Some fantastic basketball in this game, coach. Yeah, as we thought at the start, it's going to go right down to the wire. Connolly with the drive and the shot. Misses, rebound by Amelia. Out to Nash. Nash. Drills down the floor, going hard at the basket. Kicks it out to, looking for some help. Comes out to, that's McLaughlin. And it's now with Claire Amelia. Amelia trying to back her player down. Drives to the basket, hook right. shot. Great basket again Super, from super, Amelia. super basket. Fantastic score. Three point shot from Power Cassidy is missed. Kern comes up with a rebound, but taps it off her own player. 123 to go in the third. Holy Fate on Tower 49. Arts go at hanging 50. Substitution coming in with Connolly checking out. And coming into the game is Deborah Seeley as Claire Amelia gets the ball. Looks up to Sinead Byrne in the front court. 
Byrne been double teamed. That's going to leave the inside pass to Melia. Makes a good burst in the basket. This is the shot. Gets her own rebound. Goes back up and is fouled. And we'll go back to the free throw line. No score on that one. Again, Claire making herself been. Making her presence been felt in around the basket now, coach. Yeah, I mean, I, I, obviously she was in my program for two years and w an awful a lot of times she went up for a shot and, and managed to claw back the offensive rebound, either score or, or get fouled. Makes the free throw. Meg Green picked up her fourth personal foul for Holy Faith on Harford Mountain. I'm seeing a, a substitution looking to come in. As Amelia makes both. Brockman, Tiffany Brockman checks in for May Crin, who sits out with four personal fouls. Three point ball game. Power Cassidy. Ball comes outside to Malone, to Kern. Kern passes up the open tree to Power Cassidy. Better defense from Onya Nash this time. Power Cassidy off the step back, and she's going to go to the line. Yeah, we said it before, yeah, again, you know, they did a great job defensively in their man, then Rathangan, and then. Foul right at the death. On the Nash with her second personal foul as Car Cassidy goes to the line. Try and reduce the deficit to that single point. Makes the first. And makes the second. That's 18 points for. Sarsha Power Cassidy so far in this game. 49 seconds to go in the third quarter. One point game, 51 Holy Faith, 52 Arts go. There, Amelia. Out to Nash. She's going to look for the ball again inside. She gets it inside. Backs her player down. Easy pass to Scully again. And Scully again shows up with the bucket. And it's a 54 51 lead for yeah. Arts go Rathangan. Yeah, missed their assignment then on the rotation. They did a good job, but they left open the player. Three for Kern, Kern missed the shot, ball is tipped out. Looks like the Tangan are going to get the last play of the, the third quarter. I think we want the ball in. Clear Amelia hands That's coach. right, yeah. 17 seconds to go. Shot clock is turned off. Again, Holy Faith to look for a double team. It's whether she can find the uh, free play. And they don't want a fouler in the last seconds to send it to the line. So, Amelia, four seconds, three seconds. Long three-point effort. That's going to be missed. That's going to be the end of the quarter. At the end of the third quarter, Holy Faith Plantar 51, Art School Ratangan 54. So here we go for the final quarter of the under-19A Schoolgirls All-Ireland Cup Final sponsored by Subway. And it's a three-point lead at the moment for Art School Ratangan who play Holy Faith from Fontar. 54 to 51. Melia steps inside, looks for the hook shot again. The okay. is taken by Meg Crean. Yeah, tough, tough shot though. You know, that, that, that's the best that Holy Faith can do. Keep her out, keep her deep. Nice pass inside from Social Power Cassidy. Rebound taken by Claire Amelia. 
That triple-double is not too far away now, coach. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's again, Rathangan really now need to be composed. Going into the last quarter, it's Melia with the ball. Melia against O'Shea, kicks it out to McLaughlin, who gives it back to Melia on the little run and hook on the left hand. Yeah. This time she's going to be fouled and go back to the free throw line. You've seen that happen so often on a missed shot. She seems to sense where that rebound's going to go. And inevitably, she gets fouled on the, uh, on the putback. Second personal foul on Maeve O'Shea as Melia goes to the line yet again. Misses the first this time. Miss, makes the second. 25 points for Melia. Four-point lead for Rathangan. Sorsha Power Cassidy. Pass comes all the way to Ruth Fennell on the drive. Nice step by Fennell. Unlucky on the finish. Melia again with the rebound on defense. Yeah, she's uh, almost unstoppable defensively on rebound with a height mismatch. Fennell with a great interception off the pass for Melia. Connolly out to Crean. Crean has O'Shea open in the corner. Kicks it to her. O'Shea drives into the middle. Gives it out to Fennell. Fennell on the drive. Interception by McLaughlin. Great job from Alana McLaughlin as she goes to the basket. An unlucky. Yeah. We're thanking it on a good job in there, man to man. Here's Connolly. Oh, that's a travel. Yeah. Again, I, I think it's just looking at Maeve, or looking at Claire Amelia. I'm going to get blocked here, so I'm <laughs> going to do something else. But the Rathangan have gone to a man to man, and uh, you know they've done a good job. They've stopped that uh, those those deep threes that Holy Faith had shot earlier on in the game. Claire Amelia, guarded by O'Shea, kicks it out to Kellyanne Scully, back to Media to Nash, Nash inside to Melia. Ball is tipped away very well by Connolly, comes out to Fennell, Fennell on the drive against Nash, takes the little bump. Yeah, look, look like a foul. Comes back out to Crean, Crean to O'Shea, to oh, what a pass from Fennell to Sarsha Power Cassidy. Couldn't make her mind up in time, couldn't get the shot yeah. away. She had that little uh, jump shot she shot earlier in the game, perhaps that was the option then. That's better now from Sinead Burns. Just Holds the ball up, let her teammates get up the floor, yeah. get into a half-court set. Got 12 seconds, 10 seconds on the shot clock. There's a foul coming in. Foul is going to be on Sorsha Power Cassidy. That's going to be her fourth personal foul. Second team foul. Timeout called by Rathangan. 7.32 to go in the fourth. Uh, Holy Fate, Clontar 51. Art School Rathangan 55. So back to the fourth quarter, 7.32 to go, four-point game. Ratangan leading by four. Another big game tonight down the Southeast coaches. New Ross Sparks at home to Berkeley basketball. So basketball been played all over the country these days. As the ball goes inside to Claramelia to Scully, Scully, and it's May Crin saying, they, not in here. She had been looking for that pass, Claramelia, and that was well defended there by Holy Faith and May Crin. Nash. Ball's tipped out again. Yeah, this is, you know, this is where it's, it, it is tough for Holy Faith with the height mismatch. Again, they look to get the ball into Melia. Uses her body very well to get position. Wow, off the dribble, step back two. Misses the shot. 
Referee Paul Dempsey says the shot clock had gone. Yeah, that's obviously one of the difficulties. Oh, there is a shot clock, so. Yeah, they've got to run in the distance. Got game. it going now. Social power Cassidy. It's a screen inside pass, and it came off Cassidy. Well done by Connolly to keep the ball. Nate Crean up high to a shade to Connolly. Connolly with the jumper, misses the shot. Guess who has the rebound, coach? Yeah, we keep saying that name. But again, you know, Rathangan got a man to man, sagged, stopped penetration. On your Nash, inside to Melia. Melia steps back for the jump shot. Yeah, tough shot. Good hustle by McLaughlin over there, but it's Holy Fate who come up with the ball, and the ball comes out to Sorsha Power Cassidy. She's going to pull up for three. She misses the three. Rebound by Kellyanne Scully. And that's going to be a foul on O'Shea, and it's going to be a sideline possession for Ratangan. I mean, with, for Holy Faith's perspective, if you, know, if you can keep Claire Melia away from the basket. A little bit a, of confusion down there. Yeah. As I said, if you can keep Claire Melia farther away from the basket shooting those kind of shots, then you've done a good job. So Mavishay checks out and Brona Power Cassidy checks back in. She's going to take up the mantle of trying to stop Claire Amelia. It's good footwork. Ball comes out to Sinead Byrne who passes it inside to... Yeah, that's a tough, Amelia. tough shot. Again, a double team. And they got their rotations right then, Holy Faith. Stop the easy pass. That foul called on Claire Amelia. First personal foul of the game. As... Alison Connolly checks out and Kira Kern checks back in for Holy Faith. Trying to keep as much of the clock as they can. Ball clock doesn't start, the ball is touched. They got Sorsha Park Cassidy to Kern. Kern not taking the tree that's on. No, an offer. you can see that she's being marked by Claire Melia and he's just sagging. And it's Fennel with the shot and missed. Melia again with the rebound, outlet to Burn, Burn to Nash. Nash has got Kellyanne Sullivan wide open for the shot. Kellyanne Sullivan wide open for this. Scully, excuse me, wide open for the score. Again, you know, good, compo good, good composure there from Rathangan. Scully just, uh, after a great shot, just reaching in over the back this time. But Kellyanne Scully has got 10, 12 points in this game. Coach. Yeah, she, she's, she's certainly, she's come in and, and um, you know, been able to hit the open shot and made a couple of layups from the double team on Claire Melia. And finished every time. And that's stolen away by Nash. That foul is going to come in on number 21. That's Brona Power Cassidy. It's going to be Brona's yeah, time board out. foul. Look, looks like a timeout called by Coach Westbrook. Timeout for Holy Faith. Holy Faith, 51. Art School Ratangan, 57. 529 to go. Five twenty-nine to go in the fort. Holy Faith, Clontarf in red, fifty-one. Art School Ratangan in blue, fifty-seven. Holy Faith now on team fouls. So yet again, they look to go to Claire Amelia for the hook right shot up. and the finish. What a score for Amelia! Tough shot, tough shot. Twenty-seven points in the game for Amelia. Fennel with the open shot and score. 
Brings it back to a six-point game straight away. Uh, it's timely too there. Again, it's a good composure showed by Holy Faith. Not enough pressure on the ball for me, Coach. You're allowing it to come up the floor real yeah. too easy. As Sinead Byrne drives to the basket, misses the layup. Foul is going to be called on Sinead Byrne. And it's going to be Sinead's third personal foul as Alison Connolly checks back in for Sorsha Power Cassidy. You know, with Holy Face score now, you know, there's everything to play for. Here's Fennel. Long way to go in a game of basketball. Yeah. Brona, Power Cassidy. That's yeah, a travel. step first. That's a good call from Rico Robinson. Good decision there. 4.38 to go. Let's get the ball into Claire Amelia and hopefully a little foul and go to the free throw line, make your free throws. Yeah. Good drive and dish. Kicked outside to Nash. Melia. That's going to be sideline possession for Rathangan. Tough defense there by Kira Curran, though, you know. Ball passed inside to Byrne. That's going to be taken up, and it's going to be uh, possession arrows in favor of Holy Faith. And that's good pressure there from Brona Power Cassidy. As Looks to set it up. Back screen comes and a pop out from Kern. Comes to Crean. Crean back again to Fennel for the three. This is the shot. Terramelia comes up with a rebound. Yeah. Amelia still with the ball as she drives down the middle of the floor. Looks for that little floater. Miss it. Gets her own rebound again. Fouled and going to go to the line. It's an incredible amount of time that when she misses a shot, she gets her rebound. That foul came on Brona Power Cassidy. That's going to be Brona's fifth personal foul. After playing the last game as well. Fantastic job from Brona Power Cassidy as her sister checks back in. And Claire Amelia goes to the line for two free throws. Misses the first. Misses the second. We didn't yeah. expect that, coach. Yeah, that's. She's missed three of the last four. Maybe fatigue's becoming a factor. Missed four of the last six. Is that fact, right? Yeah. yeah. Again, you know, and a really unnecessary foul there. And that's the fourth team foul and also the fourth personal foul on Sinead Byrne. Like, Sinead needs to stay in the game. Three minutes to go, three and a half minutes to go. There's still an ocean of time in basketball as Crean steps out, looks to the corner for Connolly for the two. Hits the two. 59 55 in favor of Art School Rattangan. 3.39 to go. Burn on the ball, gives it back to Melia. I mean, that, that has been a hallmark of Holy Faith. You know, offensively, they've shown a lot of patience. Anya Nash comes up, takes the ball off Melia, looks to get it back to her in a better position. But stolen away, tipped away, deflected out this by Sorsha Power Cassidy. This is a problem Rathangan have got now. You know, can they combat the pressure of Holy Faith? Ball comes in to Melia. Melia. Jump ball. This, the, the arrow is in favor of Rathangan. You see the aggression there yeah. as well, don't you? <laughs> That's that must be that Gaelic football background. <laughs> Here we come with Mabel Shea going to check in for Holy Faith. And it's going to be Kira Kern taking a seat. So Shea goes on to Melia. That's a really nice task to have coming off the bench, coach. Yeah. Double teams. Paul kick to. Kellyanne Scully intercepted. Uh, Scully again on the interception. Very smart from. Yeah, don't, com don't compound a turnover with another turnover. You know. Here's Sinead Byrne. Byrne looking to the weak side with a fantastic uh, pass to Kellyanne Scully for two. That's a brilliant assist, coach. Yeah, that was a great. And she's, you know, she's, she's had three points from Sorsha Power Cassidy. Three point game. 2.50 to go. Twenty-one points for Social Power Cassidy. Foul is going to be called on number eleven, Mabel Sullivan. That's going to send yeah. Claire Amelia to the line. Again, you know, an unnecessary foul. Two minutes, thirty-nine seconds to go in the fourth quarter. 
Holy Faith on tar 58, Norris Gilbert Tangan 61, two free throws to come. Both Super teams in a penalty, coach. So yeah, Super 3 there from Power Cassidy, though. Makes the first. And makes the second. Back to normal service with Claire Amelia from the line. Ball comes to Fennel. Fennel for three. Misses the shot. Fantastic offensive rebound from Maeve O'Shea. Yeah. Er early As shot, though. Crean to Connolly. Back to Crean. Looking for the screen. She's going to drive herself. Looked to be fouled. Was fouled. He's going to go to the line for free throws. Yeah, we, we've said that. It's a reoccurring thing there. Again, you know, they've, they've done a great job with Thangan defensively in a reach-in foul there. Yeah, that foul came in from Alana McLaughlin is going to send Crean to the free throw line. She's a pretty good free throw shooter. See if we can get this back to a one possession game with 2.20 to go. Makes the first. Crean misses the second. Rebound from Byrne. Ball given straight away to Claire Amelia. Amelia on the dribble. A lot of pressure coming from Maeve O'Shea at the moment. Amelia goes by her, goes to the basket, dishes it off to Alana McLaughlin. Alana McLaughlin with a great score. Pushes her team's lead out to 6 points, 65 59. Ball comes to Connolly, to Crean. Crean looking for the three. Misses the tree. Bit early for the three pointers, coach. Yeah, plenty Tower of time. Cassidy. Plenty of time on the clock. Tar Cassidy for three. Misses it again. Rebound by Fennel. Blocked by Melia. That's going to be out of bounds to Holy Faith. Don't again, need to shoot those trees yet, coach. Yeah, that, that real early. They, you know, they've shown good ability to offensively. Coach Westbrook's going to call a timeout, have a chat about it. 147 to go. Holy Faith 59. Art Skull 65. back for the last minute and 47 seconds of this under 19 a schools cup all ireland final is sponsored by subway as Clontarf have the open shot from o'shea makes the shot back to a four point game 144 to go the only thing now coach is that Clontarf are out of timeouts with retanging with one left as burn has the ball Gives yeah we it to know Melia. we know where the ball's going to go now every offense 12 seconds on the shot clock. Goes back inside to Amelia. Amelia sees the shot clock. Passes to Kelly Anscully. Comes out to Nash. Back inside. Four seconds on the shot clock. Hook shot. Gets fouled. Going to the free throw line. Again, you know, you've, you, you've done a great job, Holy Faith, there. Defensively, you just stand up. Two hands. Vertical to the ceiling. That's and then you've got to make clear Amelia. Make a tough shot. So it's a disappointing foul there. Maeve O'Shea has been fouled out. And Kira Kern is going to replace her. One minute, 20 seconds to go. It's Holy Faith, Clontarf 61. Orange School, Ratangan 65. And Melia misses the free throw. Makes the second. So we've got a five point game, two possession game. As Sorsha Power Cassidy takes it down the floor. Power Cassidy. Makes the pass to Kern, comes back out to Fennel for the open shot. Fennel makes the shot. Three-point game. 1-11 to go. 
Melia to Byrne, takes it back. They don't have the Fowler just there. Here's the steal. Steal comes in from Byrne. Go back outside. Power Cassidy to tie it up. Makes the shot. Tied ball game. 59 seconds to go. Fantastic shot from Power Cassidy. Great steal in the front court without getting the foul. Foul comes in this time. And the foul is going to be on Sersha Power Cassidy. And that's going to be her fifth personal foul. Yeah, after that, making the game tying three point shot. Tough. Oh. Tough to see from up there. What a but, few seconds. Oh, it was definitely a foul coach. He got yeah. there way too late. Didn't, re didn't really need to do that at that stage. You know, important player to fail out at this stage. I mean, she's, she's just been unbelievable. I mean, she, I, I reckon she's got somewhere in around 27, 28 points for her team out of a total of 66. As Anya Nash goes to the line for two free throws. So, Coach Westbrooks has got to get his fifth player in the game. He gets 30 seconds, I'm sure. Referee Joe Robinson will tell him that. We're just looking at the possession arrow. That's in favor of Clontarf as well. Both teams on team fouls with 55.7 seconds to go. And into the game checks Sam Malone. Who's going to be the hero, coach? Hey, that, I, I couldn't call it. I couldn't call it. Too close to call. On your Nash. Makes the first free throw. Comes off the glass. We always say there's no picture on the score sheet, coach. <laughs> Second one, misses it. Melia with the rebound. Takes it outside. Going to set her offense. 50 seconds to go. Her team leading by a point. It's Sinead Byrne on the drive. Kicks it out. Alana McLaughlin with the shot. Misses it. Kellyanne Scully comes in. It's going to be a oh. jump ball. The jump ball is going to go in favor of yeah. Clontarf. 40 seconds to go. Clontarf losing by 1.67-66. Pro probably didn't need that shot from Rathangan there. You know, there was only one place that ball needed to go to. Maeve Green. Would you think we'll take the last shot, Coach Fur? Ball comes back to Crean. Crean is going to take the drive, kicks it out to Curran. Curran's cross court pass to Fennel. Fennel looks at the tree, decides not to take it. Crean's got the ball, nine seconds on the shot clock. Connolly for three, misses the shot. Now, coach, 22 seconds to go. Yeah, good timeout they, there, Colt. Timeout called by Paddy Donovan with 22 seconds to go. Arts goal, Ratangan 67, Holy Fate 66. So, 22 seconds to go in the National Basketball Arena, under 19A school girls, All-Ireland School Cups final, sponsored by Subway. And it's Ratangan with the ball. They're going to get it to Melia. I'm They've surprised they haven't fouled. fouled. They're not going to, hasn't fouled yet. 17 yeah. seconds, it's going to be taking time off the clock to get him a shot. Now they'll foul. They look to foul Burns straight away. Foul comes in on Melia. Referee's not going to call it. No. So, Melia with the ball. They're going to run out the clock. Six seconds to go, five seconds to go. Yeah, like, um, I, I really, you know, that's a foul straight from the inbound. 17 seconds taken off the, off the clock, yeah, coach. Uh, I think that was a mistake then by Holy Faith. Ratanka will be very happy with that as Melia goes to the line to try and make her 30th and 31st point of this game. She makes the first. Are we going to get that? It's still going to be a one possession game after this, even if she makes it. She misses the second. Ball is touched out of bounds. It comes off Holy Fate. It's going to be 
in line possession for Ratangan. Just give it to Claire Amelia, let him foul her, let her go to the line and win the game for you. Amelia. Oh, no foul, Cullen. Game. Foul was it again, two seconds off the clock, coach. Yeah. I think the referees have been a little bit lenient there, you know. It's been a fantastic game of basketball. Yeah. It's a um, great, great advert for schools basketball. And this lady on the line is, is surely, I mean, there's not enough superlatives to, to say how yeah, good this yeah. kid is. I, th I think the, you know, the thing that she's been able to do is her assists. Find, find the free man. Yeah, Co by, by my, sorry, coach, by my reckoning, she has eight assists. She's got those, got those, how many offensive, defensive rebounds and over 30 points. Yeah. The game is over and the final score is Holy Faith from Tarf 66, Art School at 70. Thank you very much to Andy great Gill job, yet again. Yeah. Very enjoyable and a great advert for schools basketball. Well played to both teams. And we'll see you again very soon for the next game. Thank you very much.
Welcome to today's Under 16C All Ireland Cup final between CBS Thurlis and St. Nathan's College. I'll give you a quick rundown of uh, the teams Liam Kenny, Arthur Granary Moore, Patrick Tobin, Jack Ryan, Patrick O'Gorman, Blaine Carroll, Kieran Kerwin, Jack Hare, Sean Mockley, Victor Hemmon, Killian Ryan, and for St. Nathan's College. Number six, David McBrien. Number four, Kean Tanzi. Number seven, David McHugh. Number eight, Chris Kennedy. Number nine, Jared Forrest. Number 10, Patrick O'Grady. Number 11, Jamie Lunt. Number 12, Keelan O'Callaghan. Number 13, Jack Hallwell. 14, Adam McAllister. 15, Jack Freeman. 25, Ron Lowry. So in commentary with me today is Connor James. Connor, what have we seen so far? Yeah, we've seen uh, the two nervous teams by the looks of it. Um, you know, a couple of turnovers early on, which is uh, bound to happen. And you know, at this age, in, in front of uh, you know a crowd of friends. So, uh, as the game goes in, they'll settle down hopefully, and we'll start seeing some proper basketball. So, Thurlis early in the zone, three-two zone. Shot missed by Saint Nathies, and we're in for a slow contest so far. What do you think they're going to be looking at here today, Connor? I think, you know, as you pointed out, they're, they're both teams are playing zone already, so the key will be getting inside early and trying to get some easy scores instead of setting up for jump shots. Um, while obviously on the defense, they'll be allowing those jump shots and trying to clog up the middle. Some long distance shooting. Shoots a prayer, doesn't get answered. I think we might see a lot of long distance shooting with the zones here today. And there's an early drive, called, or travel call by the referee. And again, another slow bring up. Third is into their 3-2 zone. All bounds. So hopefully the nerves will start settling down. Jack Freeman on the ball. Nice pass to Jack Harwell. And the first score of the game goes to CBS Thurlis from the layup. And that's exactly what you were looking to talk about there, Connor. Trying yeah, to get the ball inside. Did very well to, to penetrate the zone. And then he had a guy cut into the basket, which is exactly what you should do off the ball. And uh, he was able to get over for the layup. And the score becomes Fowler. Jack Cowell. And we will have. Jimmy Lunt to the line for two free throws. Makes the first. Not as big a crowd as the uh, first game, Connor, but still there's a nice little bit of noise here that's going to give them a little bit of energy and maybe a little bit of nervousness at the same time. Absolutely, they're, they're definitely uh, making themselves heard and uh, the, the both teams will take great encouragement from, uh, from great support from their friends. And then the slip. And another layup for CBS Thurlis. And a long distance from Ryan Lowry, rebounds, and Ryan's going again. Nice rebound, but again, very, very slow at the moment, um, Connor. It's it's slow in terms of on scoring. I mean, the game has actually been quite quite fast, and you know, it's it's gone from one end to another without actually any offense being run properly, except for the one time they got the layup. Um, both teams kind of need to settle down now and work the ball from side to side so they can try to get a decent, easy score. St. Nathies trying to get the ball at the high post. Turn over by Ryan. And Jack trying to punish him on the other end. But nice recovery on defense by St. Nathies. 
bit of a scramble going on. CBS with the scramble, and now it's back in Jack's hands again. And so there's a couple of turnovers, he draws the foul on this occasion. So as you said, it's a bit helter-skelter at the moment. Oh, it's an offensive. No, the players are running away. So this is CBS ball. A lot of deflection so far in the game, slowing the pace of the game down, but players are trying to do their best. Nice long distance shot, off the back of the rim. And Nathie's trying to punish them, but travel called. Ball screen set by Jack, Carwell into the jump shot. And right now, Jack Corwell seems to be the focal point for CBS. Absolutely, he looks like the go-to guy. I think that's his, uh, that's his second basket anyway. Um, you know, and at this early, early stage, it'll help settle the nerves for, uh, for CBS. Referee's calling it very tight. A lot of fouls early on. A timeout for St. Nathies. What are the two teams going to be asking for in these timeouts, Connor? I think, you know, a lot of it just needs to be, be calmed down, you know, try work the ball from side to side. And there's obviously been a lot of turnovers, so try to limit the turnovers, you know, and, and after that, let, let the offense take care of itself. So both teams coming back out, CBS ball. And we'll see if they can continue to get the inside of the zone. They're running the horn set now. Nice rebound by Ryan. Sorry, but yeah, Ryan Lowry. But he knocks the other bounds, unfortunately. Again, those deflections. And again, Jack trying to recover it back, but good pressure, forces out of bounds, gives the ball back to St. Nathies. Moving it to Ryan, nice reversal to David McBrien. And a push by David, oh no, not David, by Liam Kenny. Sorry, Arthur Granario. CBS changing to a 2-3 zone from a 3-2. Nice help defense. And again, CBS winning the loose ball. Again, very just a, a little bit of nerve still maybe take into the first quarter, Connor. Yeah, I mean, at this age, I think, you know, the guys are still learning some of the fundamentals between, you know, footwork, you know, shooting technique and passing technique. And, you know, you're bound to see turnovers at this level. Um, and it just comes with the player development. Nice block by, by Jack again. Getting a lot of hands on those balls, Jack is right now. It's not only is he doing on the offensive end, he's doing on the defensive end. Nice steal by CBS. And that was probably the quickest score of the game so far, Connor. Nice little interception by CBS. One, two passes, got the layup, rebound, and back in. 
Yeah, I mean, they're really applying pressure now to uh, to uh, St. Nathie's very early on. And, you know, St. Nathie's really get a, need to get a grip of this game before it kind of, you know, not slips away, but just gets a bit out of control. So that's their first score from open play. And that might settle the nerves now for St. Nathie's because they've missed a couple of rims or around the rims early on. And maybe now the fact they've got their first score might settle them down and, and uh, put CBS under a bit more pressure now. Exactly. And, and it was an easy score right under the basket, which is definitely something that's going to help, help their confidence. And nice defensive. So anytime you get that nice first score, always nice to get a nice defensive stop at the other end. St. Nathie's bringing the ball up now and they're bringing it up with a bit more purpose now after that first score. Ryan cut through, gets the reversal. Looking for the high post. Nice drive kick. And a nice little shot at the end of that decent offense right there. Yeah, not, nice patience there by St. Nathies, and they got a good shot at the end. And, and the more they do that, the more the shots will start falling for them. Hand off. Romario. Nice little drive and score by Jared Forrest. Oh no, it's not Jared Forrest, it's Victor Hammond. Again, both teams mixed up there, Connor. And Jack goes off on one of his coast to coasts. Missed layup, good rebound. Love the hustle right now. Yeah, both great. teams getting on the floor. So Arthur just knocking it off of the knee of David McHugh right there. Up and under, doesn't work out. But a nice little attempt at a, a high level skill there. Yeah, it was nice to see. Unfortunately, it just didn't come off him. Right now, Jamie Lunt seems to be working around the post area on his own, high post to low post. They got it to him this time. Tough shot. And you got six seconds to get it off, will it? Referee calls a foul on the open floor. So, five seconds to go. Let's see if uh, CBS can get a shot off. Nice little steal. Both teams really trying to get some pressure now and get that last shot before the end of the first quarter. That was good defense by uh, St. Nathies, especially Jared Forrest. Jack is going off in his own. Halfway line shot. Oh! Would have been nice to finish that off. So, good first quarter by CBS and room for improvement by St. Nathies. So, we're back to the second quarter. Tittany and Heath Simba on the basketball. And after first quarter, I'd imagine both coaches would have been saying, right, we're settled down now. Now it's time to get to the business end. Definitely. And, and St. Nathan's have been kind of taking those jump shots. So I'd say they've been told to get the ball inside, which they've just done, and it's resulted in two free throws. So, a good start for St. Nathan's. Trying to get back in this game on the small seven point margin. Nothing to get overexcited about just yet. So 
to Jared Forrest. Missed the first, makes the second. That'll, that'll do the world of good to come for their confidence right now. Make, getting that first foul and first score of the second quarter to bring them a little bit back further again. Definitely, and free throws are a great way of doing that. You know, the free shot in the Hunts Garden, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's just you in the basket. So if you can put them in, you know, it'll help in your in-play game. And St. Nathan switched to a 3-2 or 1-2-2 zone, putting a little bit more pressure to um, stop the penetration on the inside by CBS, and they get a rebound on you from that. And they're getting to the high post a bit more now in the first two possessions. Nice block by Jack. Arthur Grimario trying to push the ball up the floor. And they're slowing it down a little bit now. Working a little bit of patience. Nice little cut through the key by... Liam Kenny. And Grimario with the steal on the other end. That was Victor with the shot. Liam getting the rebound. Jack on the ball right now, penetrating. Nice attempted layup. Quick outlet pass by St. Nathies. And a quick layup on the other end. So for all the offensive efforts of uh, CBS in the start of the second quarter, St. Nathies are the ones that have got the first three points of putting CBS in the pressure a little bit now. Yeah, CBS ran a couple of good offense and just couldn't put the ball in the basket. And obviously that's the aim of the game. And when you're giving up fast break layers on the other end, you know, your team's bound to suffer. So CBS now, probably psychologically putting themselves under too much pressure to get that first score. And a couple of turnovers isn't helping the cause. That's a good shot by Jamie Lunt, and they've found Jamie a couple of times on the start of the second quarter, and he's been a focal point of their offense so far. Nice rebound by David McBrien, but no good. Now Liam Kenny bringing the ball up the floor. Gets the pass to Jared Forrest. Back to Liam with the three, and again resorting to the outside shooting. But St. Nathie's getting the rebound and looking to hit some guys in the fast break now. Again going to Jamie Lunt. Reverse back out. And they're being very patient here now, St. Nathie's. Really working the shot clock. Might need to get a shot off quicker here now. And there it is. Rushing then, got to travel. And a timeout by St. Nathies. So we're back into the middle of the second quarter, 5.02 remaining. And St. Nathies have a 3-0 lead in this quarter to bring it back to 10-6. So Liam is, Liam Kenny's bringing the ball up the floor, quick pass to Jared Forrest. And they're going back inside a little bit here now again. Sorry, I keep getting my teams mixed up. 
and hope to get better as the game goes on. Another th long three by Liam Lunt, and then he goes again. Rebound by Jack Cowell. So, Liam, can you bring the ball down the floor? And that's a nice little floater to set CBS off in the second quarter by Victor Hammond. Victor's been doing a nice job in this quarter from the focal point. So now St. Nathan's really for, trying to force it into Liam. They need to maybe try and do something a little different now. But he gets, yep, and gets called for the travel. So that's a good um, recognition by the CBS coaching staff. Uh, Liam was doing all the damage in the start of the second quarter, and now double teaming him in the in the second quarter. Exactly, he was surrounded there, didn't have much to do, and, and to be fair to CBS service defense, they really got around him quickly and just didn't give him a chance to even think about what to do. And a long, long three by Liam Kenny. St. Nathan's up with the rebound, nice little transition. A nice block by, block by Jack Powell. And I've been informed in the last time out that it is Arthur Geronimo. So I've had the wrong pronunciation all day. Quite apt if he makes a long three in a minute. <laughs> nice little handoff action. And the block by St. Nathies. And that's the second score of the quarter by Victor Hemmen. So that timeout seems to have worked for CBS now. Yeah, it was a, to call that a good time, they seem to be a bit all over the place on offense, but they've really uh, got themselves under control and, you know, back into the swing of things. Nice block by Jack. Jack has been doing an awful lot of good things on both ends of the floor now. I mean, he's making some good handoff actions. He's defending, he's out getting the four or five blocks already, and... Nearly came up with the score to stretch the lead out. Himself and Vincent seem to be the you know the focal point of uh, the CBS Tours team. Uh, it's it's built around them and it's and you know they're they're answering the call. They're 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 doing everything they can possibly do to put their team in the lead. Certainly. So, timeout coming by St. Nathies. Hopefully, stop the run and let's see what they come up with after the timeout. So, welcome back to the Under-16 National Cup Subway Final between St. Nathies and CBS Thurlis. And they're just coming back off a timeout by St. Nathies. And they have made an adjustment on that zone now. They've gone back to a 2-1-2 coming from their 1-2-2. But CBS still get the rebound with Jack. And that was a bit ambitious there by Victor Hemmen with the... Uh, Skip pass to Liam Kenny. So, give us a recap of the game so far, Connor. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, obviously the, the, the kind of the main feature, unfortunately, has been turnovers. Um, but you know, it, it's 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 been caused by you know decent defense um, from both sides, and uh, at the moment, it seems like Jack Ryan and, and um, Jack Colwell and. Victor, Victor Hemmen. Victor Hemmen. I've, I've really been the standouts uh, 
you know, they've really put the, the scores on the board for CBS Turles. Um, so if Nathies can key in on those two guys, make the other guys step up, we could see a different score. Yeah, it seems to be a game of runs as well. I mean, it starts off with an eight-point eight, eight run by CBS and another three-point run by by St. Nathies, followed by a four-point run by St. Nathies, followed by another four-point run. So it seems to be a game of runs so far. Yeah, in fairness to both coaches, they've, they've called timeouts at the right time and um, their teams have come off runs uh, you know, on the back of timeouts, which uh, you know, shows some experience by the coaches. Well, hopefully that will uh, spark a bit of life back into St. Nathies. They were the ones that called the last timeout, so if it is a game of runs, maybe they get the next one. And the guy that we haven't mentioned so far is Jack Hare. Jack seems to be occupying a lot of um, the defense because they're switching, me well, they're not switching, but the one guy in the top of the one 2, two seems to be dropping into Jack the entire time. And if he's not there, he pops out to make the one 2, two. And if he is there, it seems to be dropping back into 2 one two. So clearly they recognize Jack is causing some problems in the middle of the key. Mm. Um, and maybe they're picking their poison and waiting to see if... Uh, yeah, he's a big body, so he's definitely one to be focused on. Nice little rebound by Jack Ryan. Oh, Jack's in the CBS team. Nice little uh, alley-oop there. Nearly pulled off. Nice close out by Jack Hare. And Jack Caldwell moves on down the floor. So Jack to Jack. So as we, as myself and Connor continue to make a mess of our debuts on the uh, co-commentary, we have just realized that we've been calling Jack Caldwell the wrong name all day. So his name is actually Sean Mockler. So apologies to anybody watching on that. So Patrick O'Grady pops up with the score and maybe that starts the Next run for St. Nathies. And that's broken with a nice little drive by Killian Ryan. Yeah, he did very well to penetrate the zone there. And just as he saw the defense coming to him, was able to stop and just float it up over. Nice defense by CBS to force a lob and turnover. And that will bring the ball back up. And that's a good decision by David McBrien. So maybe he's an expert on the rules, knowing that they were going to get the ball back up for the last shot close to the basket. Liam, at the end of the ball, gets blocked by Sean Mockler. And the last shot gets taken by Killian Ryan. So a bit of frantic end to the half right there, Connor. Yeah, from me and you both. <laughs> Well, we promised to do our best in the second half with the right name, so we'll see you guys next for the under-16C Subway National Cup.
So, welcome back to the under 16 C Boys Subway Cup final, where CBS of Thurlis beats St. Nathie's 16 to 8. So, what adjustments do you think co coaches made at halftime? Yeah, I guess uh, CBS, are, you know, technically speaking, looking for more of the same in terms of, um, you know, getting some easy scores inside and getting the ball to their to two main players. Well, CBS will be trying to obviously focus in on those two guys and, you know, from that defense on those guys, lead to easy baskets on offense, you know, via fast break. Uh, they, they're going to get, like we just happened right now, just can't convert. So as you said, one of the main guys, Victor Hemmen, taking the opening three and Liam or Jimmy Lunt getting the rebound with a beautiful baseball pass full length of the floor. Unfortunately, St. Nathies just couldn't catch it for an easy layup to start the half. Arthur Geronimo getting a nice little NBA trick to get the drive and finish with a nice little floating layup. Yeah, he did really well to, to penetrate the zone there and just lift it up over the fender and, and into the net. So Jamie Lunt with a nice spin move, getting fouled on the elbow. And he'll go to the, to the line for two free throws. So you would have to imagine right now that if St. Nathan were to get back in this game, they'll have to get a quick early run maybe. And Jamie Lunt would have to help them get over the line a little bit now, because so far he has been the go-to guy for St. Nathan's and he just misses two free throws. Exactly, he's, he's been quite unlucky so far. He's getting some really good looks and getting himself into some good positions. And you know, it's uh, kind of a, a long, age old thing now. The rings in the arena are tough to, tough to work with and it's proven so for Jamie tonight. So again, Sean Mockler, the real Sean Mockler, getting a nice little drive and deflection for all the bounds. Arthur Geronimo, and there it is. <laughs> So, what we have been focusing on, Sean Mockler and Victor Hammon, Arthur Geronimo has been tipping away nicely and now being the focal guy in this half. Nice yeah, block. It's, it's, it's great to see so many guys step up for the one team. And, uh, you know, St. Nathan's need to put a stop to this run quickly before, uh, you know, they're, they're out of sight. And again, we've talked about Sean Mockler on both ends of the floor, and there again, he came up with a nice little uh, block. St. Nathan's trying to answer the call. Unfortunately, doesn't drop. Jamie Lunt with the deflection off the foot. And a nice little drive by David McBrien. And he's been tipping along nicely as well. If he can come he's into the game a little bit now, that will give St. Nathan's a nice little opportunity. He's really he put himself about the floor on you know on both ends, and he's you can see he's there under the basket because he's active. His his hands are up, and he's you know he's ready ready for the ball, ready to get the rebound. But he's he's keeping active, so it can keep him in the game and um, involved will be great for them. And the second floater of the game for Victor Hemmen. and he's been getting that sweep through into the middle of the key a couple of times in this game now, even against the zone. So St. Nathies will have to recognize that and close up the top of their zone. So 21 to 12 to CBS. And Sean Mockler again. And again, while a lot of other players on the team are coming up with big scores from here and there or whatever, Sean Mockler seems to be the guy that's doing it on both ends. He seems to be the leader on the floor right now. Yeah, he, he's definitely, you can see that he's got a nice set of uh, IQ, basketball IQ. He, he knows that, you know, once a shot goes up, don't just stand and watch the ball, go and contest the rebound. And he did that. He put McBride under pressure, and uh, that time McBride was just able to hold him off. So St. Nathan's possibly extending their defense up the floor. Young Ryan Lowry trying to slow down the offense a little bit for CBS. And now they're back into their 1-2-2 uh, defense. And a three by Jack, rebound by Dave McBrien. Larry, Larry 
And again, another deflection and, and steal by Sean Mockler. Another loose ball won by Sean. Good hustle there by CBS and Victor Hemmen, albeit going out of bounds, but it just shows that the, they're really up for this game and willing to put their bodies in line for small details. It's a tough call there now for Jamie Lunt, trying to make a right play and just stepped over the back court. So you can really see the intent now with CBS. They're trying to just extend that game out a little bit, trying to get those an extra couple of scores to put even more pressure on St. Nathies. But nice defense by St. Nathies and David McBride in particular there. Getting the block and knocking it off of a CBS yeah, hand for he's a done, He's done very well. Uh, the, the one thing I'll say about CBS is that they are starting to run some really nice offense where they're all moving and they're all doing the right thing. So, you know, St. Nathies really need to apply some more pressure to make sure that, you know, that, they don't concede much more than that, and unfortunately they've just done concede another two points. And the heroics of Arthur Geronimo continuing the second half with a seventh point. A nice steal and layup to extend the lead to 25-12. Or maybe there's a miscount somewhere on the line, but it seems to be 20. So on the scoreboard in the arena, we've got 25-10. There's a correction. And Sean Mockler being very composed in the ball. Nice little kick out. And Victor Hemmen with the nice score. Yeah, it was lovely work there by Killian Ryan driving baseline. And he saw the defender come over to help. And instead of taking a contested layup, he was able to hand it off uh, to Victor for, for an easy uh, two-point shot. So Killian Ryan on the ball right now. And you can see just one or two players in the CBS team that might be just looking for a bit of a breather. Sean Mockler with the shot and follow up with a rebound. And maybe being 17 points up might need a breather, but we'll see how the rest of it goes. Yeah, CBS, CBS have gone with the, you know, Relatively the same five for the for the whole game, so there'd be no surprise if they were tired and you know at this point uh, making their team 17 up, they they probably deserve a break. Yeah, I think the referee's discussion there because I did think it went off a CBS knee, and to be fair, the referees they discuss it and come up with the correct answer, I would imagine. Good defense by Kenyon Ryan. Way to stay in front. Jamie Lunt and Dave McBrien with a nice score. Nice high post pass from Jamie Lunt. Dave McBrien. Yeah, he got his angles correct there and he used the glass and uh, you know, fade away, which is a tough shot to make, but he did very well there. Oh, nice little uh, penetration by Mr. Kenny out to Victor Hemmen. Unfortunately, the shot didn't go down. And a very active Arthur Geronimo on Chris Kennedy forcing a jump ball which St. Nathies gets. And the three, rebound by Dave McBrien, and the defensive rebound by Liam Kenny, and he's pushing that. And a nice little pass to Sean Mockler, but unfortunately it doesn't go down for CBS. Yeah, McBrien very unlucky on, on, on one end, and he was, you know, he was close to the basket on offense, and he was the quickest one to get back on defense to, to stop Sean Mockler get an easy two. So great work from him, and you know he'll need some of that effort, uh, you know, spread throughout the team if they want to, you know, get back into this game. So we just spoke about CBS being tired, and now all of a sudden they're extending their defense and they're really putting pressure on St. Nathies. And they're getting some deflections now in the, in, in the, in the open court. Oh, nice little high post back door. You know, I've, that's an interesting call, but it was a nice little play between Jamie Lunt and David McBrien. Just unfortunately got called for 
a walking violation. So Killian Ryan breaking the defense. A nice little pass to Liam Kenny for the nice little floating layup. And you have to say, a CBS have finished this quarter really strong with their pressure defense. Arthur Geronimo again with pressure getting deflections. Yeah, and if St. Nathan's are going to pressure the ball, you know, full court defense, they're going to have to make sure that they, they don't break it as easy as that and leave themselves exposed at the back and, uh, you know, give up layups, especially when they're trying to chase the game. That was a nice block to block screen by St. Nathies. And Dave McBride again with the nice layup. So CBS slowing it down a little bit, a bit more composed now later in the quarter. And Jamie Lunt with the missed layup. Nice little pass again. And great credit due to Jamie Lunt. Staying with it, getting his own offensive rebound and making the pass off to, Ke to Keelan O'Callaghan, who now gets the two shots. So Jack Hare will be coming in, looks like for Sean Mockler. And that's the well-earned break. Well-earned break for uh, Sean Mockler. I would imagine we will be seeing Sean start the fourth quarter, and that's a good uh, substitution by the CBS coaching staff. Yeah, they get a minute now, they get another minute at the time at the end of the quarter, and um, that will do them the world of good coming into the fourth. Uh, Semi-fresh legs, but uh, you know, ready to go and put the game to bed. And the substitution of Jack Hare comes, works right off the bat, gets a nice defensive rebound. And that's a nice power move by Jack. And Force doesn't drop in. A little bit of a tussle into the basket, but nice second attempt by Jamie Lund for the baseball pass. Just a little bit too much. And CBS will look to take the last shot of the third quarter. So Liam Kennedy bringing it up pretty quickly. Through the legs a bunch of times. And Geronimo with the last shot. And doesn't make it. So to end the third quarter, CBS 29 and St. Nathie's 14. Please come back and watch the fourth quarter of the under 16 subway. So, welcome back to the fourth quarter of the under 16 C Boys National Cup Subway Final. So, Connor, when you look at the scores, and it's 29 to 14 to CBS, right now, St. Nathan's going to have to score more in this last quarter than they have the entire three quarters just to tie the game without conceding. Yeah, it's going to be a big ask for them. And, you know, at this stage of the game, they're obviously tired. Uh, they've been chasing the game for quite some time now. so. You know, the legs aren't as fresh as they were. Um, they're just really going to have to dig deep, and it's going to take a lot of mental strength to, you know, 
tell themselves they're not tired and dig in on defense and you know make the right decisions on offense and try to get some easy baskets. Some Jorgen Klopp uh, phrases there, uh, Connor. Mind over, mind over, uh, over matter, huh? If you say so. <laughs> so two quick stops by St. Nathies, but they need to put some points on the board here now to have any chance of trying to make a run here now. So a long three. So they stay with it. And Jamie Lunt with the three. That was a nice little tip by David McBrien to Keelan O'Callaghan. And they've started this with the first score. And that's... Uh, yeah, that David, David McBrien doing great work. He got two rebounds of two misses and eventually tapped it to the guy who's wide open to, to, to make a layup. They really can't be giving up second chances here now. CBS doing the right thing here and just taking some time off the clock before the, you know, a lot of patience on offense and... And there we go. And as you suggested, nice patience. They saw the space. Nice little assist by Keelan Ryan out to Liam Kenny for the open three. St. Nate, he's taking a few risks now to try and get the ball to their go-to guys. Some nice work, some nice distractions by Jack Hare. Geronimo with the inside out again. I'm watching a bit of Steph Curry, I think. So good defensive rebound by St. Nathies. And to be fair to St. Nathies, they're looking for some they're not rushing their shots, they've gotten some good looks. It's just the knockdown stuff that they've been missing. So CBS taking some air out of the ball. And Victor Hemmen with a long two. And a nice deflection and recovery by Liam Kenny. So while he didn't start it, we did expect Sean Mockler to come in pretty quickly and he's coming in to give Victor Hemmen a nice rest, well earned. A nice close up by Jack Hare. Rebound by Liam Kenny. Tough, very unlucky by Jamie Lunt. Another long one to follow up by Liam. No luck. Geronimo gets blocked by Jamie Lunt. And Jack Hare takes it from Jamie and picks up to Makes Jamie pick up a, a foul. And Jack gets in, goes to the line for two free throws. Some good aggression being shown there. He, he just wanted the ball more than Lunt and was just able to grab it off him, go up strong for two for uh, you know for the layup and um, Lund had to foul him in order to, to make it not make it easy for him. Yeah, it was crafty out of um, Jack Hare to be fair, just coming in from the blind side and and, and taking that. <laughs> Mix the first. <laughs> Missed the second and Jamie Lunt. One of the standout performers for St. Nathies gets the rebound. Unfortunate rim out for Chris Kennedy. St. Nathies trying to make it a little bit more difficult now. Turnaround jumper and gets a defensive rebound. That's two unfortunate misses now by Chris Kennedy. So the are doing a really good job getting out in the break and trying to get the easy scores. They just, just can't convert at the moment. It seems that they're leaking somebody out the entire time now, just trying to take a gamble. You know, making the off, making CBS play five and four, trying to get a rebound and just turfing yeah. it long. There's no, nothing to lose at this point, so, you know, why not? 
That was a nice little post up and kick out by Sean Mockler out to Liam Kenny with the three, but they get their offensive rebound. And these are the plays that will really take the stuffing out of St. Nathie's if they can't get defensive rebounds. And again, even this late stage in the game, and they're 17 points in the, in the lead, they're still working for those loose balls and trying to keep those loose balls in. Yeah, great work by Sean. And, you know, maybe that rest is doing him the world of good in this quarter. He's uh, really, uh, you know, showing himself uh, in a good way since he's come back on. And he's hustling there, like you said, and, you know, the game just about put to bed. So, you know, great attitude from a player like that. And Geronimo comes off the floor, and to be fair, has been absolutely exceptional in the second half. He, he really kick-started, uh, you know, the, the, the game in the second half for, for CBS Service, and then um, while a lot of the earlier work uh, was, was done by Sean Mocker and uh, Victor... Victor Hemmen. Victor Hemmen. Um, he really uh, stepped up now in the third quarter and took the weight off those guys. And, and the uh, big man with a long, long two. It's just those small little, you know, bounces and those small little turnovers that have just cost St. Nathies really in this game, hasn't it? Yeah, it just I guess it's a little bit of inexperience, and it's something that they, you know, they'll learn from hopefully, and uh, you know, they'll take with them and develop them, their, you know, their careers and, and just their individual game. You have to give credit to CBS, you know, their. They're still working as hard now as they were in the first minute, and they're putting a lot of pressure on and making it tougher than ever for St. Nathies to get some scores. Yeah, you can see there, they're just clogging up the middle and making them take tough shots, but there you go. Well, there you go, that's the first three for Jamie Lunt. And we've seen some spectacular comebacks in the arena here, Connor. Is this about to be another one? It's, it's hard to see, but you'll never rule anything out. Well, they get a stop, and that's the first thing after a big score. Getting a stop in the next possession. So let's see if they can put one on the board here now and just put thoughts in the minds of CBS. Well, a nice steal by CBS. Oh, and an, an attempt at uh, an alley hoop. Oh, my God. I don't know what to call that. Well, when you've had the day that Sean Mockler has had with all the defensive stops and the deflections and the rebounds and the scores, you know what? Give it a go. Just turf it over the shoulder there and see what happens. <laughs> Have to say, Keen here since he's, or um, Jack here since he's come on the floor has been quite good on the defensive end. Unfortunate turnover there. Liam Kenny still looking to push the ball up the floor. Nice behind the back. Crossover. And they're still getting to the rim. Killian Ryan looking to take the game over a little bit now. Oh, and the substitute for the first time in the game. George Ruiz makes his mark on the game with a two-point play. Yeah, they, they stuck with the play very. The whole team stuck with the play very well there, just you know, battling for the rebound and then fell to him, and he just uh, popped it up there and was fortunate enough to get it in.
So the last one minute and 52 seconds of the under 16C boys Subway National Cup final. And right now you'd have to expect St. Nathan's to come out and start making some of those tough shots which they just haven't. Yeah. It's been one of those days. Yeah, it's not like they've been you know making it all game, so it's gonna be a tough ass one to you know start doing an hour, two minutes ago. So we're going to start seeing some first-time substitutions of players in the game now. So Jack Hare is going to come out. Very good game by Jack Hare on the glass on both ends. And Patrick Tobin is going to come in for Jack. So George Ruiz, a bit of shake and bake. And steps out of bounds. So St. Nathan's, if they're going to make any sort of inroads here, are going to have to do this in the next couple of seconds. And there it is, long three. But nice rebound by Sean Mockler. I think when you see the experienced guys, inexperienced guys on the floor like you do with CBS right now, it just shows the leadership that Sean Mockler has when he's the one guy that's been staying on the floor right now. He's been excellent all game, and you can tell he's a go-to guy. And uh, his teammates are happy enough for him to be the go-to guy because he keeps on delivering for him. And there he is coming off um, to a well-deserved round of applause. As is Liam Kenny, who's had a very good solid performance in the second half, carrying the basketball up the floor for CBS. When we are this far in the ascendancy, you know, it's always nice when your starting guys can come off the floor and just enjoy the enjoy the experience and, and watch your teammates finish off the job that they've done. Exactly, just just time to soak it in and it's you know it's something that you know may be forgotten very quickly when you know you you know as well as I do that you know <laughs> you can forget them quite easy you forget how it feels and that's why you want to keep going for more. Oh without question and you know in fairness to both teams they've worked very very hard today and it worked for CBS and not so much for St. Nathies and a couple of a couple of bounces a different direction who knows what kind of game it would have been but to be fair I think CBS have been deserved their victory yeah absolutely they just seem a bit more experienced maybe got a few more club players than uh, the Nathies do and they've really just put that to their advantage and to be fair to St. Nathies they've shown different things and they haven't just been one dimensional and um, so you know they gave it a go they gave it a go And George Ruiz now will finish out the, the game in the last possession. So you can hear the CBS supporters now in full voice waiting for that final whistle. CBS will take the last shot. Three, two, and to be fair, one. and we're going to be finishing this off with three shots for Jamie Lunt. So it's not quite over just yet. So a bit premature celebrations, albeit the game be over, but on the buzzer, Jamie Lunt gets fouled. You can, you can tell his body reaction, he doesn't really want to take it. He's, he's, he realizes the game's over, he just, just wants to get on with it now. And to be fair to the St. Nathan supporters, they're, they're encouraging him on the entire time. So congratulations to CBS of Thurlis. Commiserations to St. Nathan's for the worthy final and in fairness to both teams, they gave it a go. Yeah, great job by both teams. And uh, as you mentioned, great job by both supporters. We could barely hear ourselves up here over them, but they, you know, they support our teams very well, and uh, it didn't disappoint in a really good final.
So that is the end of our under 16 C boys Subway National Cup final and tune back in for the main event of the under 19 A between Closha Column of Cork and St. Aidan's Dublin.
So, welcome to the Under-19 A Subway National Cup Final for boys. And we're right off the bat, and a foul to start the game. On number seven, Brian Murphy. That's a tough foul, and Tosh to call him right off the bat. So, I'll just run you through the two starting fives while the two free throws have been taken. Number for Klaus to call him, number 11, Conor O'Sullivan. Number seven, Brian Murphy. Number 10, Dylan Corkery. Number 13, Dylan Brickley. And number 14, Emmanuel Anaba. And there's two shots for number nine, Emmett Lawless for St. Aidan's. Number six, Tariq Gabali. Number 22, Matt Tracy. Number five, Stephen Ganning. And number nine, Emmett Lawless, sorry, I repeated that. And number eight, Brian Ashton. So, two teams in the zone early. Thoughts, Connor? Yeah, I just it's going to be a highly physical encounter, I'd imagine. Um, St. Aidan's seem to have a, you know, a lot of height, a lot of strength. Um, but, you know, Clash of Cullum are notoriously, uh, you know, aggressive down to the basket. You know, very well coached, obviously. So, uh, going to be an interesting affair. Yeah, and you just spoke about two coaches, two very experienced coach in Randall Mounts for St. Aidan's. As Tariq gets a nice little drive to the basket. And Francis Sullivan for Cloche de Cullum. So, so far, two made lit, two. First, sorry, first score for the open play for Tariq. Nice drive by Brian, deflection by Emmett Lawless. That's a really good defensive possession by St. Aidan's. Yeah, they're very well to close out to the shooters on the perimeter. Um, force them to drive into the help where there was the help. Um, and, you know, eventually just run out of time. So the size of St. Aidan's already taking its toll on Klaus Cullum. Nice pass by Matt Tracy. Good reverse by Emma Lawless. Brian Ashton to the rim. And a nice little lefty two. That's two drives by St. Aidan's now on the Cloche Cullum zone. And let's see how long more they stay in that. Three by Brian Murphy. Rebound by Brian Ashton. Good loose ball by Cloche Cullum. Nice pass ahead by Conor Sullivan. A force to travel by Emmanuel. So, the size of, as I said already, St. Aidan's causing Clash of Cullum problems. At the moment, they, they just seem a little bit more focused. Uh, they knew that you know they were going to try blitzing from the start, and they've, they've just done that. They've come into blocks a lot, a lot faster than Clash of Cullum. That's a nice little deflection by Conor O'Sullivan, and I think Clash of Cullum will need more of that. Defecting their offense. That's a nice little split by Tariq. Good steal by Dylan Corkery. And again, that's the second time they've found Emmanuel. So maybe that's a tactic by Klaus to Cullum, Connor. Yeah, he's been twice very quick off the break. Uh, I'd hate to say he's leaking out this early in the game, but he's uh, he's definitely he's quick out there. And um, they've, they've done well to find him twice. And this time he was looking to draw the foul. No, St. Aidan's will be looking to hopefully keep Klaus to Cullum scoreless as long as they can. That'll frustrate them, but that's nice defense by Dylan Brickley. And nice inside out. And there's Emmanuel right there. And maybe that might be the key, Connor. Press them high up the floor, not let them get the, the gaps on the inside. Yeah, exactly. And uh, put, putting the uh, pressure on the ball this, you know, that far out, if they are going to try fast break like that, and if they you know, put pressure on the ball the halfway line, uh, they have a great chance of getting out there because they're showing pace early on. Well, that was a nice isolation. By Stephen Ganning right there. And the and Brian Murphy. Three by Conor Sullivan. That's four different scores so far for uh, St. Aidan's, which you know potentially is a problem for uh, for Clash of Cullum. And there's the fifth. And there's the fifth. And that's that's a matchup. That's a nightmare matchup matchup for uh, Clash of Cullum now with Matt Tracy. I mean he's a guard, he's 6'5, you know, and you're looking at Conor Sullivan and he's Maybe 5-9, but that's a good middle of the zone uh, pass right there by Dylan Cork to Brian Murphy. But they get a rebound, Tariq out in the run. 
Throwback pass to Ganning. Reversal to Brian Ashton. Air ball. Connor Sullivan really pushing that ball now. Now you're talking about two different sides there, Connor. You talk about the physical side in St. Aidan's, you're talking about the quick side in Colosh to Column. Interesting yeah, matchup. Very, very much so. He saw a great take there. Uh, he really did well to take the contact and uh, through the foul. Uh, obviously couldn't put it in with, with the amount of contact, but uh, you know, getting these bigger guys in foul trouble could be a, a huge part of the game. So 6.05 on left in the first quarter. And Connor Sullivan makes his first free throw and the second to make it 10-4. And already you're seeing the, probably the difference between the C type of game and an A type of game between the first um, two games. That's nice high extension of the zone. Forcing a turnover. And let's see now if Klaus de Cullum can eat into this uh, six point lead. Dylan Brickley with a tough pass to the wing. You got two smart guards in Dylan Brickley and, and Connor Sullivan. Two guys who've been around the quite a while and they've obviously been small guys and being around a while, they'll have an idea of how to deal with that. Brennan Murphy with a nice drive, but got blocked. And then missed layup by Tariq. Doesn't look like Francis Sullivan's very happy right now. The ball appeared to bounce out of play. I think even St. Aidan saw the bounce out of play, but didn't hear a whistle. Yeah, and the, I'd probably say that there uh, you know, was justice been done on that missed layup. But again, there you go again. They're doing a great job. They're doing a great job finding the middle of the, or the high post, that 3-2 zone against uh, St. Aidan's. And that might be where they need to get a lot of joy now and really try and get the, the heart of that zone. Yeah, they, they did well to get the ball inside. And Tarek, uh, you know, big, long, athletic, so he was able to just block it out of bounds. Getting in trouble in the corner. But they get out of jail. Nice, um, competent play by Brian, or Dylan Brickley. Ball reversed by Brian Murphy. Connor Sullivan to Emmanuel. Back to Connor Sullivan. Ball screen. Trapped, coming from uh, St. Aidan's, but they find the shooter. And they really need Dylan Corkery to find the shooting boots because he's a really good shooter. They need to get him to get hot early. Yeah, but that was a good shot to take. They, they, you know, there was eight, eight seconds left in the shot clock. You know, they worked it for 16 seconds and he was open. So they keep shooting shots like that that eventually drop for him. Stephen Ganning staying with it. That was on rebound. Off missed layup. But right now, the middle of the both zones is the area of attack for both teams. Substitutions coming from both sides. Jack Murphy, number eight, coming in for Emmanuel. No, nope, St. Aidan's thought it was a substitution, but, or sorry, a time up, but it wasn't. So Jack is going to give them a bit more speed now. Open look for Dylan Cork, Brickley. A nice run up by Terry Cabaldi.
So welcome back to the 19A Subway Cup final, second quarter. And it looks like St. Aidan's have started off where they've uh, finished the first. Um, getting out in the run out. And that's where he's best. He's, he's really good in the open floor because he's long. He's letting her get to the basket easy. So we really need to stop him in the open floor. Yeah, and Josh Conner are, are rushing their shots now. But. Nice drive. A travel by Emmett Lawless. So Emmanuel coming back in for Connor Sullivan. Or sorry, Brian Murphy. This might do the world of good for Brian now. He just needs to reset himself. Brian's a very good basketball player. Just needs to settle his feet now. And he'll be here this weekend as well for Neptune. For the under 18 cup final. Nice reversal by Brian Murphy to another shooter, Connor Sullivan. Lack of communication by Jack and Emmanuel. I'm sure Francis Sullivan will be quite happy with the fact they chased the offensive rebounds there. Yeah, they're, they're working hard at the moment, which is what's important. You know, after this initial start, hopefully they'll calm down and, and still will start falling their way. And Tariq is really causing havoc to that Kosha Cullum defense now. Length and size and athleticism. And that's, you know, Klaus Khan need to continue to look for their drives. They've been causing some problems, but they haven't been, haven't been uh, good at executing it. And Ganning is coming out. So they can pick up a small knock. And Kieran McHugh is coming in to replace Stephen Ganning. Canning. Turnover by Dylan Corkery. And a good attempt getting back to throw by Jack Murphy. Yeah, he did a great job, uh, you know, stopping the easy two. Probably maybe a bit unfortunate to be called for the foul. He seemed to get his hand up there nice and straight, but uh, two shots still now for St. Aidan's. Quick subs chew it in. Brian Murphy back in the game real quickly. I think if if Toshcom are going to get back in this game, they might just need to knock down a couple of threes when they get the chance just to spread that floor because they've been getting in the middle of the, that zone quite quite well but they just haven't knocked down some shots or or layups yeah, if they if they start making some shots you know the defense will have to extend extend itself and then even bigger gaps will you know occur in, in the middle of the key and they can start getting some easier baskets nice rebound by Dylan Corkery but turnover by Connor Sullivan and there's that man again Tariq Gabaldi on the on the leak outs he's been at the end of everything good that St. Aids have done so far and their defense has really caused their their run outs. So it's a high post to, Brian, to Dylan Corkery, back out to Connor Sullivan. Good rebound by Brian Murphy. And picks up the foul. You know, there it is again, and they're keep hitting the high post. Kosha Cullum, you know, they gotta keep doing what they're what they're getting. And they keep getting the high post, and hopefully they'll keep they'll knock down some shots soon to, to get back in this game. A timeout coming by St. Aidan's. And it is St. Aidan's 20, close to column 4, with 2.20 remaining in the first.
So, welcome back to the second quarter. Or sorry, the last two minutes and 18 seconds of the first. You know. And a nice drive by Dylan Brickley, unfortunately blocked by Brian Ashton. And he goes coast to coast to get an open look. A great look there. He's obviously very quick. Um, able to brush by his defenders and switch from left to right and, and put it in the reverse layer. Tough shot by Brian. Good rebound with Matt Tracy. And you've got a 6'5 that can handle the ball like this. Always going to make a difference. Nice rebound by Brian. And a great assist by Brian with Dylan Brickley at the end of the layup. Yeah, layups like that will hopefully give uh, Crosby Kills some, some confidence. You know, they're easy basket. There we go. Here's another one, hopefully. And young Jack Murphy. And he gets... And Jack is so quick in the open floor now. So, what's the phrase, Connor? When you're finding it difficult to score, get something easy. Exactly. And the last two scores with Klaus Cullum, they've been pretty easy. So, they got to continue with that for Bay now. Tariq with a nice post up. An easy look. That's a nice drive by Brian. And close to Cullum, it looks like Connor have been getting some joy with the penetration. They just haven't gotten rewarded for their penetration into the lane. Yeah, they've, they've clearly got some very quick guards who are, you know, getting in there. But obviously, when you get in there, you're coming against bigger guys, and you know, shots are just being altered a little bit. And um, you know, it's it's keeping them, you know, to obviously eight points so far. So I guess. To, as you said, they got to keep doing what they're doing, get into the middle so they can collapse the defense, but they just got to start making those shots on the outside. And they have the shooters too. I mean, Connor Sullivan, you know, Dylan Corkery, especially, two really good shooters, and they need to get themselves where they're getting more uncontested looks. And they've had a couple. You know, if they find their feet in the second quarter, who knows what might happen? They might get a little bit of a, a, run, a run back. But they've got to make free throws and they're uncontested, and Brian's a good free throw shooter as well. That's unfortunate for him. And there's Tariq getting in the lane again. You know, two sloppy plays from both teams there now. Yeah, I think I think Francis Sullivan will just be asking Clutch and Cullen Kill to or to just you know take it down and, and slow it down and work the ball side to side and look for a better shot. Just just it can't keep carrying on the way it is. Yeah, with... You know, I think France will be upset there because his team should have even taken the last shot with no shot clock on the remaining. And nice, nice work by Jack. Forcing it to a tough shot. So, in the first quarter, Tosh to column eight, St. Aidan's 24. And we'll see you back for the second quarter in a, just over a moment for the under-19A Subway National Cup Final. So, welcome back to the second quarter. And one O'Sullivan to the other O'Sullivan brother. 
inbound the basketball to Daryl Sullivan, number 15, and Connor Sullivan, number 11. Nice reversal out by Jack Murphy. Nice drive by Dylan. Open three. And that's the sort of looks they're looking for, Connor. Yeah. He's got to make him now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what they're looking for. They just got to go in. And, and when they don't go in, you just got to get back in transition quicker than that. You can't let one person you know, dribble almost half the end of the floor without being stopped. That was a nice drive by Dylan Corkery to Connor O'Sullivan. You know, you'd be expecting Connor to start knocking those down. First miss by Brian Ashton, who has been quite effective defensively, to be fair to him. And missed by the second. But I think if you look at the the two teams right now, it just shows you, you know, Klaus kind of 216 players on the floor with Dara number 15 and Jack Murphy number eight. Whereas I think St. Aid's have natural, natural in 19s and a tough miss by Dara right there. With a good move. Nice block by Dylan Corkery. And a nice pass by Connor to Brian Murphy. And that's the thing, Connor Sullivan's strength is he's a good passer, so if you get out and leak out, he'll find you. Yeah, they're showing that that's what they're good at so far. You know, when they get these decent stops inside, you know, it was a good block there. They're able to get out quickly, and the guys are quick enough on the break, you know, to go to the other end uncontested and, and get an easy two. And what do you think of uh, Klaus to Kulmik staying in their zone right, right there and putting a bit more pressure in? on the St. Aidan's offense. Yeah, I mean, St. Aidan's biggest threat seems to be inside, so if they can extend the zone a little bit, you know, put more pressure on the guards and make it you know, harder to get the ball to those guys inside, uh, it, could, it could do them the world of good. And that play right there just shows you the difference in size, and that's a tough layup to make by, for Dylan Corkery against the size of Matt Tracy and Sean Canning. But there, nice hook shot over Tariq Kabali. And they cut the deficit in half, and it's now close to column 12. St. Aidan's 24. Nice ball move by St. Aidan. Matt Tracy with the three. Oh, and the shooter's touch. Yeah, a bit of a dagger there for Kloster Cullum as they try to get back into this game. You know, it was well contested and just got the roll. Tosh comes staying with the misses. Least expected rebounder would have been Conor Sullivan there, but he got it. Nice save by Dylan Brickley. And nice drive by Brian Murphy. Just got to make those now. And you can see, since the extension of the defense by Klaus to Cullum, it caused St. Aidan's a few more problems. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and like you can see, you know, as you said, these guys are bigger. Matt Trace is out in the perimeter, and he's got, you know, as, as high a skill level as he has. When he's got smaller guards just nipping around with his hands, it's, you know, it can put anybody off. So again, Klaus come extend their defense. Nice block by Dylan Brickley. Klaus come slowing it down. Long floor pass by Dylan Brickley. Having a look, Brian Murphy with the three. Ball short. Nice skip pass by Tariq. And a tough foul by Darrow Sullivan and Sean Canning. And he makes the score and he's going to go to the line for a three point play. Yeah, Canning did very well there to get his defender in the air. And he's take the contact and uh, did well to finish it. Smart play. That's Dara Sullivan's second uh, foul. So it'll be interesting to see how long more he stays on the floor. Nice rebound by Dylan Brickley. Finding his handle. That was a nice uh, pass by Dylan Brickley to Dylan Corkery. Yeah, he's in the fumbling the ball there, but he still kept his head up and was able to find an open man. And, and uh, he was rewarded there with two shots. You know, the free throw shooting across Cullum hasn't been great so far, but these are the type of scores that they need to be making in order to stay in the game. Yeah. 
missed by the first by Dylan Corkery. And makes the second. And Matt Trace is going to come out of the, of the game for a quick rest. And number 10, Chris McHugh will come in for St. Aidan's. Josh Cullen will really put pressure up the floor now. Nice deflection. That pass ahead. And that seems to be their best offense right now is their defense. Yeah, they've really set it up now, defense. Here we go again. Nice little crossover by Connor Sullivan. Super work. The lane. And they're back in this game a little bit now. Back to 12 points. And Darrell Sullivan with deflection. You can see the St. Aidan's guys getting um, crossed with uh, Brian Ashley for not coming back in the ball. And another, one under 16 for another. Jack Murphy coming in for Darrell Sullivan. Nice block. Another great block. For a small team, they're blocking St. Aidan's quite a bit at the moment. Nice kick out by Conor Sullivan. Reversal through Brian Murphy and back again. Brian Murphy with a nice kick out to Dylan Corkery. Offensive rebound by Connor. Missed short jumper. And Chris McHugh comes away with the defensive rebound. And another block. And they're really leaking out tough here now. That's a tough miss. But they're staying with it. They're the ones they gotta make now. It's to put a little bit more pressure on St. Aidan's, but they're really going after it here now. Yeah, the momentum is starting to shift, so when you get those chances, you know, to put those lives in, you just got to do it, keep the momentum going as long as possible. And Brian Murphy, second foul, and Darrow Sullivan, under 16, coming in for his older brother, Connor O'Sullivan, who's a natural 19. But again, you can just see, you know, the lack of depth that Clash Cullum have really in, in age and in size. And there were, you know, 216s coming off the bench. Clash Cullum have done quite well in the second quarter, Connor. Yeah, they've done very well. They, it's like Francis just had a word with them, you know, conceded 24 points in the first quarter, and that just wasn't good enough. And That's a nice pass by Brian, unfortunately, just a fumble by Darrow Sullivan. So Matt Tracy got his quick breathers coming back in for Tariq Cabali. Seems right now both coaches are kind of getting their rest in for their guys. Nice little switching action by Klaus to Cullum. The trap coming. Well, that's a tough foul by Brian Murphy now. That's his third. Chance there he's going to come out of the game. Yeah, it was very unlucky there. He wrapped his arm around, maybe caught him, maybe didn't. You know, those ones are always 50-50, and unfortunately it's resulted in two shots. From my experience, Connor, I don't think those wrap rounds are 50-50. They're more like 90-10. It's the one area that tells the column now, if they can just close the middle up, they're putting a lot of pressure on the perimeters, but they're allowing the middle penetration, if they can clean it up, I think they might just uh, get a few more leak outs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th I suppose the thing is, when you get to the middle, you have to defend all five spots, but if you force them to a baseline, then you know, there's always That's a chance that the weak side can be made. nice fast break basket by Klaus Chacolin with the steal. And you know what? No, no. St. Danes are trying to get the ball in quickly, and that's an... That's a top mistake by Matt Tracy, violation, and it forces coach Randall Mounts for a timeout. And let's see what happens in the remaining of the half, with 5.14 remaining.
So welcome back, and it's coming out of the timeout. 5.14 remaining. Clashcon 19, St. Aidan's 29. Nice rebound by Dylan Brickley. Nice shot fake. So Emmanuel comes back in, and that's what he's going to be expected to do, is trying to pick up some offensive rebounds. Klaus Cullum need to make those chippies to stay in the game. Now win. So St. Edge win the long rebound. They're getting the short rebound. The and Klaus Cullum come away with it. Nice pass, brother to brother. Nice block by Tariq, athletic play. And there's a 6-5 Matt Tracy leaking out in the upper floor. And finding Brian Ashton for the easy two. Yeah, great play by Tariq to get back and make the block. And, you know, just as momentum was going really in favour of uh, Klaus Cullum, he, he saved the team on defence and made back out to a 12-point game all of a sudden. And there's the first three for Klaus Cullum. Nice kick out by Dylan Brickley. I'm really close, Colin, we're gambling on everything right now. The cause of problems for St. Aidan's in the half court. Matt Tracy staying with it. That's the third chance too. He's just, he's just too big in there for, for uh, Colin to deal with. So Colin Colin run the horn stuff. Good inside out, and Forrester with the three. And smart Dylan Corkery coming up with it, Connor Sullivan. And that's two threes from both Sullivan brothers. Have to say, fair play to Klaus to Cullen for coming up with this uh, with this run right now, and they're really making it difficult for the St. Aidan's team. Yeah, they just seem to be getting their hands to everything. They're really focusing in on the key guys, and. You know, making them we that's a, a force fadeaway, you know, from there, you'll take that any day. And they're the simple mistakes they gotta figure out and not cut those out. So the game has slowed down just a fraction. It's two costly turnovers now for Klaus Cullum just as things are starting to look up for them. So Darrow Sullivan extending his own defense, making the first pass difficult. Nice recoveries. High-low turnover from Sean Canning. Dylan Brickley bringing the ball up the floor. An extra pass. So they've made two of their last four threes, Klaus Cullum. But they need Dylan Corkery firing now. It's been a really good second quarter, Connor. Yeah, the energy Very level, fast. energy level is really picked up. You can you can tell the teams are feeding from you know the cheers of the crowd and um, really just picked up. So seven seconds remaining on the shot clock, 2:06 remaining on the game clock, 25-35 to St. Aidan's. Silly foul there to make when you, you know you're in the penalty. Keep sending them to the line now for the next two minutes for every foul. Close call on five team fouls. St. Aidan's on one. So Sean Canning with two free throws. Makes the first with the shooter's touch. And missed the second. And Matt Tracy comes up with the offensive rebound. And an easy two. So for all the good work Klaus and Cullen have done, you need to finish the second half strong now. And Darrell Sullivan again. Missed that one. Tariq Cabali with the defensive rebound. And he'll start the offense for St. Davis. Nice pass from Sean, from Matt Tracy to a timeout 
by Klaus de Kallen. So a 6-0 run to cause a timeout by Klaus de Kallen, and they'll talk it over. So, welcome back to the last one minute, 35 seconds of the half. And just, in, just looking down on both teams in the half, it looks, you can see this Francis Sullivan must keep telling this team, get the ball to the middle of the zone, good things are happening, you just gotta make some shots. Yeah, they, when they've calmed him down, down on offense, um, you know, when the initial fast break isn't on, that's when they've been best, you know, they, they get into the key, they've been taking the right shots, you know, they have and they haven't fallen at different times. But they just, it's shot selection for them right now is, is the main thing. That was good play by Br uh, from Darrow Sullivan. Took the three, you know, played defense right off the bat, and got a nice drive, but blocked blocked out of the bounds by Sid Adams. Now the open, now the open shot by Dylan Corkery. And they really need him to start scoring now. So John Agour for Klaus Conner, 24, is coming to the fray. Give him an extra bit of size. And that's the third or fourth um, walking violation St. Danes have had since Klaus de Cullum have increased the pressure and they're putting them under pressure to make some plays now and they're getting some walks. Yeah, and I've, you know, it's, it's just a case of kind of you know, getting your guards to stay and your big men to stay inside and you know, get the ball, where they, get Tarek the ball where he wants the ball and you know, not on, not on the wing. Uh, you know, Matt Tracy's probably more suited to being that kind of big guy to step out rather than Tarek. It was a nice weak side back door cut by Darrow Sullivan. It's a force of fumble from the pass from Dylan, Dylan Brickley. But Darrow Sullivan putting some more pressure in the full court, Matt Tracy. Brian Ashton with the spin move. And Dylan Corkery come up with the defensive rebound. Right. Dylan Brickley with the full court pass to Darrow Sullivan with the pass to his brother Connor with the three, but a defensive rebound by Sean Canning. Tariq Gabali on the floor now, on the ball. And that's that wrap round again. That 90 10 is looking like a 100 0 right now. I've been enough of those situations, Connor. The key is not make the referees make the decisions. But unfortunately, the wrap rounds were close to come right now. They're making the referees make it, have to make a decision. So Tariq knocks down the first. Stretches the lead out to 16 with 7.9 seconds remaining on the clock. Missed the second. One last shot by Klaus to Cullen maybe. And the three point play, that's a really good. That's a, a great learning curve there by any young player. Back, back to the offensive basket, got the rebound, quick out of the pass to, to Dylan Brickley and the nice full court layup. Yeah, that was a great job. Less than four seconds to get the ball in the basket from, you know, from the rebound, which is, uh, which is impressive by any standard. I missed the first, I missed the shot. So that makes the half. So, to finish the half, it is Klausikov 27, 
St. Aidan's 41. And that is the halftime of the under 19A National Cup Subway Final.
So, welcome back to the second half for the Under-19A National Cup Subway Final. And for the second half, I'll be joined by Temple Oak, centre and forward, Jason Cleans. Jason, thoughts so far? Well, Paul, for the first half of this game, I got to be a spectator, and it's, it's been an outstanding game so far. I look forward to more now in the second half. So, starting off the second half, Emmett Lawless, just like he did the first, Again, the first score of the half. And St. Aidan's come out and trapping early. And Brian Ashton with the layoff. Sean Canning with the offensive rebound, picks up the foul. So, different tactic by St. Aidan's coming out in the second half where they recognize that Closter Cullum were getting some open looks and they are now trapping on the first pass, it looks like, Jason. Yeah, that's what seemed to work for uh, the Cork side in the first half. Anyway, they pr uh, pressured the ball almost full court. Got a lot of turnovers and layups off of that, so. So Sean Canning, unfortunate with the first. And makes a second. And when you're that far in the lead at half time, Jason, you know, getting that first score just to ease it, that the stop to come back is important, so St. Aidan's have done that quite well. Yeah, it's very nice, but as we saw in the first half, it doesn't matter how big this, the, the score, the deficit is, the Cork side are going to come back and they're going to play until the very end. And anything could happen, really. Nice open look by Brian Ardell and Brickley. And Brian Murphy with the offensive rebound. And that'll do him the world of good since he didn't score in the first and he had some nice looks. So Brian's setting himself off now and he might become a bigger threat now in the second half. Yeah, let's be careful with that foul trouble now. Playing the aggressive style of defense on three fouls. Tariq with the missed layup. Darren Forsha with the defensive rebound. So five guards on the floor now for Klaus to come. They're going to spread the floor. Again, getting to the inside of that zone. And they've done that quite well throughout the game. Just haven't punished St. Aidan's as much as they would have liked. Nice pass over the top by... And they missed the violation there, that definitely hit the glass first. Connor Sullivan with the... Yeah, you can see Klaus Shikam right now, they're trying to force the issue a little bit. That yeah, was a think, great turnover. I think they would have felt hard done by the last time down the floor with the block off the backboard and just compiled it there with the, the offensive foul. Yeah, for sure. And Darrow Sullivan putting full court pressure again. And Darrow's actually done quite well in this game. He's, he's really led the front line quite well for Klaus to call him. Forced him into a couple of turnovers and... Yeah, Darrow's done a great job. I've been uh, fortunate enough to coach him for the last last number of months or a year with the, the Irish under-16 national team. And he's, he's come along leaps and bounds and this is an extension of it now we see on the floor. He's got that length up the top of the... Uh, and that length caused a poor pass. Dylan Brickley, Connor Sullivan, Connor with his own rebound, Mr. Floater, Tariq with the fumble, and Darrow with the follow up after a messy play. That'll do them the world of confidence now, getting one of those messy plays, and there's always one more or two in the game, and they've put it away. Tariq in the inside, nice rebound by Brian Murphy. A foul by Tariq. We just lost Jason for a split second. Close to Cullum, continuing with the tactics that they had in the first half. Putting a lot of pressure on the ball. Getting to the high post again. Nice high low. Tough miss by Brian. And Darrow Sullivan again being the first line. Close to Cullum getting punished for not punishing St. Aidan's on their own end. Sean Canning to the line for two for Stephen Canning. Makes the first. Brick, 
Brendan Brickley with the... And close to Colm are getting those looks, Jason. They just haven't made them right now. Yeah, they're getting the looks. They were getting them in the first half and they're continuing to get them now, but they've got to make them layups and not leave the deficit get too much before we run out of time. That was nice defensive play by Conor Sullivan. Picking up the offensive of Matt Tracy. And another young player coming in out for Claude Cullum, Jack Murphy. Jack was also involved with that under 16 uh, national team for the past year. And same as Darla, really, he's come along leaps and bounds, and we, we look forward to seeing him again more in the future. You know, Dara hit a couple of threes in the, in the first half and Josh Conn tried to set him up there to hopefully get an open look, but pass went astray from Dylan Brickley. Jack Murphy extending the defense. Dylan Brickley recovering, Jack coming back into the play. Nice, nice dribble move by Tariq Gabaldi getting down the middle and makes the layup over the front of the rim. Tosha Colm slowing the play down. Getting the reversal. Another three. And Stephen Cannon getting the uncontested defensive rebound. And Jack Murphy recovering back into the play, being the first line of defense. And Chris McHugh with the missed uh, layup. Stephen Cannon with the offensive. Chris McHugh getting the messy play, getting the offensive rebound and tucking it in. Very important to clean up your own boards like that, Paul. You give them four and five chances, they're bound to pick up a foul or score a basket. Well, Klosh Kulmu cranked up the intensity defensively. Offensively, they've slowed it down. I think there's going to be a timeout coming here from Klosh to Kulmu. Nice defense from Dylan Corkery. Jack Reedy. Pushing that play now. Reverse it through Brian, getting the open look for Darrow Sullivan. And that's exactly what they need to be doing now. That's the difference Jack Murphy has made already. He's pushed that floor, pushed the ball up the floor, sink the defense, and reverse it to an open Darrow Sullivan. And a nice strong play by Tariq Gabaldi. Yes, and the timeout by Klaus de Cullum, and Francis Sullivan's going to talk it over. So, 5.04 remaining in the third quarter. Klaus Cullum 34, St. Aidan's 53. What do um, Klaus Cullum need to do to get back in this game, Jason? Well, they need to knock down the shots. We saw there from Dara Sullivan at the end of the, just before the timeout, hitting that open three. Two shot, or... You know, that nice play by Connor coming in with the floater. I think that was a little bit. Let's see what the scenario is here. Francis Sullivan wants to talk to the referees, and we'll have the time out right now.
So, Ash will take the foul, be one shot in possession. And Brian Ashton will take the free throw. And he makes it. So that extends the lead out to 18. And Emmett Lawless with a nice dish to Chris McHugh, but he misses. Stephen Canning got the offensive and he misses too. So Connor Sullivan really being assertive with the dribble right there. And picking up the foul. Just a little bit of handbags. I look, there's two competitive teams, you know, there's bound to be a little pushing and shoving. That's okay too. Two teams just want to be successful. Kick out to Jack Murphy. Nice drive, kick. Dylan Corkery and the miss. Small Dylan Brickley with the rebound. He missed the follow up. Tariq with the rebound. Taking oh. a fortunate. Got away with the walk there from Matt Tracy. Josh Cohn with the quick inbounds. Nice high post action, Jack Murphy with the three. And they've actually got quite a bit of joy all game on the high post, even with even with Dylan Corker right there. Yeah, they're doing a great job of penetrating the middle and kicking it to the spot up shooters on the outside. You just have to knock down the shots. So Tariq looking to get the rim again. That's a nice powerful play. Just a little bit of a knock on Connor Sullivan. Get his win back. Josh Cullen really need to keep pushing this out now. Really taking it to St. Aidan's if they want to get back in this game. Yeah, they're getting the open shots. They need to shore up their defensive rebounds now and get some, get a couple of stops. They need to make a few more threes as well. And Tariq telling this team to calm down. Bit of adventurous. Stephen Canning getting the offensive rebound and the foul from behind by Jack Murphy. It's a bit of a wild shot there from Terry, but we've seen the past couple of possessions. He's getting down the middle and scoring layups, so I think he felt good about that last one. Stephen Canning, this is the first. And makes the second to push it out to the 20 point lead. To be fair, you know, it's not really a 20 point game really, it's just Klaus kind of missed a couple of open looks and, and the physical size of St. Aidan's has got him over the, over the top a little bit. Yeah, and Paul, we can definitely see the start of St. Aidan's had come out here. They got a nice cushion at the beginning, and it's very hard to fight back from that. So Dylan Brickley will be coming out. Darrell Sullivan come back in. So the table just talking with the referees. Slight issue. So with 2.59 remaining in the third, close to come 39, St. Aidan's 59. So as you said, Jason, Tariq trying to force it now and they've got two stops in two possessions. It's close to column, becoming a little bit predictable. And a different look from the high post this time with Dylan Corkery making the drive. Usually he's been facilitating the open looks from the three-point line. And he goes to the line for two shots. So 
So Dylan Corker makes the first, makes the second to bring it to 41-59. And apologies for the wrong score on line, a few technical issues. So really good defense by the two under 16s. Jack Murphy up the floor and Tariq and Darrell Sullivan with the deflection. So the referees being strict with both coaches now in the coaching box. So Matt Tracy with the aggressive drive. And a nice finish at the rim. Tariq extending the pressure on the 3-2. Again, they find the high post. And again, Dylan Corkery will go to the free throw line for two. Dylan missed the first. So he makes one for two. Darrell Sullivan with the pressure. Chris McHugh with the short corner layup. Stephen Canning with the offensive and gets the Big man touch around the rim. Jason Udeman liking that uh, little touch around the rim there. That's it. Bit of contact and put it in. St. Aidan's up in the pressure. Tariq with the steal. Nice little cut off by Jack Murphy, but the kick by Tariq over the backboard. And again, the nice hustle by Tariq. Trying to keep it in. Both teams working hard now. Trying to force loose balls. Jack Murphy coming out. We're going to leave Dylan Brickley to come back in. So St. Aiden switched to a man to man defense, Jason, taking away the. That might change up the offense of Kosh Cullum. They got a steal. And Emmett Lawless with the, with the layup again. And they're back at their 3 2. And a missed three by Connor Sullivan. And to be fair to Kosh Cullum, I mean, they've, they've gotten. Some good looks off the pressure, and they're not backing down. They keep going because they know they're getting the looks. It's just a matter of ma knocking them down. That's but it. E that's it exactly. I mean, they're never going to give up. They're a very competitive team, and they'll play it till the very end. But it's very. It takes a lot of energy out of you coming back over and over again. You know. Sean Canning with the touch again. This time from the short corner. Dara Sullivan. Again, Connor Sullivan with the open look, and this time knocks it down. Nice skip pass from Dara Sullivan to Dylan Brickley. Brickley back out with the replay action to Connor Sullivan. But you can see how tired now Klaus Cullum are because all they're doing is sticking hands in now instead of moving their feet. You know, if they're going to have any chance of getting back in this now, they've got to start moving, finding a way to get their feet in front and not letting Emmett Lawless and Brian Ashton and Tariq split those gaps in the press. Yeah, a bit of frustration coming in now as well. I mean, they need to go back to what they did in the first half to bring it to bring the deficit back down. And that's like you say, get in front of the ball. And Manuel is going to come in for Dylan Corkery, who's on four. And that's a bit of a last note for Klaus Cullum because Dylan Corkery has been, has been doing a good job on the high post. Reversing the ball through the high post, albeit that Klaus kind of missed shots, but he's been doing a good job finding the open guys and got the free throw line two or three times also. That's it, exactly. We see throughout the year that they're very capable of knocking down them shots. It's just some you hope to start to do it sooner than later. So with 27 seconds remaining on the clock, 45-67 to St. Aidan's. 
at this point, unless it's a wide open layup. So St. Aidan's will get the last shot here now. And nice tracking back by Dylan Brickley to get the deflection. So John Gore is going to come in, try and shore up the inside. And Brian Murphy's going to take a an extra little bit of a breather coming in or coming out off the floor and get an extra couple of seconds other than the minute from the end of the quarter. Well, he's on three fouls there as well. I'm sure uh, Coach Francis Sullivan doesn't want him to pick up the four with nine seconds left in the quarter. So Tariq with the last shot. Rebound by Emmanuel. That's a foul. I think by Chris McHugh and the referee confirms that. And... Connor O'Sullivan will go to the free throw line to try and bring it back to the 20 point deficit. And make the first. Uh, the Magic Claw Shacolum will try and set their press up to not let St. Aidan's get an easy look for the, the last four seconds. And makes the second. And that's exactly what happens. And Tariq with the last one and air balls the flown three so to finish the third quarter of the under 19A cup final sponsored by Subway Clash of Cullen 47 and St. Aidan 67 see you for the fourth So, welcome back for the fourth and final quarter and the last game of the Subway Cup week. John Gore with the rebound off and the unfortunate travel. So, Jason, if we are to see what could be called an unlikely comeback right now, what do Clash Cullen need to do here? Well, I mean, they need to knock down their shots, they need to pressure the ball and not give away offensive rebounds. And that's the big thing really, and that's going to be tough with the size of St. Aidan's is not giving up the offensive rebounds. Yeah, look, it's going to be a big ask, but they have 9 minutes 34 seconds to come back from a 20-point deficit now. They need to shore up the defensive side of the floor. And you and I have both seen and been involved where 20 points can be eradicated. We saw them on the School Cup Finals here last year. 2 minutes, 20 points. 23 down at halftime, Rathangan. Yep, commentated on it. Very good game. And Emma Lawless makes the second. Connor Sullivan on the ball. Hit the short corners. And they're setting up. And we've seen that set play once or twice now throughout the game I think the slip could be there on the inside Jason that's it St. Edens are going for the steal every time nice inside good work by Emmanuel on the, on the high post and a nice drive by Dylan Brickley in the rebound from Emmanuel 
So back to 19. As we said in the last game. I was just about to say for after every score they need to stop and now it looks like it's going to be a three point play for St. Aidan's. And to be fair to close to Cullum, I mean, this isn't the only team that St. Aidan's have, have done this to in, in the cup competition. We were on the end of it ourselves with Great Cost of Array G in the first game of the cup. I think everybody else since has been on, had a similar faith. I said, I think everyone involved with the Subway Schools Cup this year knows what St. Aidan's are capable of, and they're showing us again here today. Nice offensive rebound by Emmanuel. And that's two assists for Emmanuel in the fourth quarter off of offensive rebounds. Now. That's exactly it. And the thing about this, if Closer Cullum can get St. Aidan's into a bit of foul trouble and get to the free throw line early with every foul, scoring when the clock is stopped is a massive, massive thing. And you know that as well as I do, Jason. That's it exactly, Paul. So, timeout by St. Aidan's. 8.35 remaining in the fourth. Closer Cullum 51, St. Aidan's 70. So, last 8.30 remaining. So they still in their 3-2 zone defense. Defense, defense, defense. Nice kick out by Brian Murphy. Defensive rebound by Brian O'Connor. Good defense by Daryl Sullivan forcing the deflection out of bounds. And there's a high post again. And Brian Murphy staying with the play with Emmanuel and creating the foul. And we'll go to the line for two shots. And the rotation of Jack Murphy and Darrell Sullivan continues. Trying to keep the top line of the defense fresh. And Brian knocks on the first. And knocks on the second. Back to 17. 8 one remaining. And again. A lot of pressure by the Closer Cullum team. Forcing a difficult pass, Emmanuel coming out. And Tariq and Emmett Laws getting a quick breather. For St. Aidan's. Nice little pass into Stephen Canning. And he drops up and makes the lefty layup. Get passed by Dylan Brickley, Jack Murphy. St. Aidan's spot the danger, cut it off. And a bit of a fancy pass by Brian Ashton, which didn't come off, but they get lucky with the deflection. Goes out of bounds, St. Aidan's ball. 
You know, Paul, I think Klaus Schakulum here are just really going to go for it in the next seven minutes. They have two players on the floor in, uh, with uh, four fouls, so Coach Francis Sullivan just going to put it all out there and go for the win. I think at this stage, that's really all they can do now. So Brian Nash to miss the first. Missed the second. Nice rebound, Matt Tracy. And Sean, or Stephen Canning misses the offensive. A quick run out. Quick run out by Klaus to Cullum. Two passes in the basket, and that's a nice transition basket. And they get another rebound. Let's see if they can punish him again. Nice drive by Dylan. Just a little bit of a sloppy pass. To be fair, I think both teams have put up a really good performance, Jason. You know, I think the real difference in the game has been the physical size by St. Aidan's, and that play just proved it right there with the physical drive by a 6-5 on the six-footers of Klaus de Cullum. So to be fair, both teams have put on a good performance. Uh, look, looking at the schedule for the week, we knew this was going to be a good game. There's a lot of, uh, lot of experience out there on the floor, both nationally and internationally. And uh, I think it was the, the start that St. Aidan's got with their size that, that's pushed them over the edge right now. And Tariq Gabaldi comes back in for Brian O'Connor. Top three by Connor. Nice rebound by Dylan Cork. Three. And a nice drive, unfortunate miss by Conor O'Sullivan. Double pump in the air. And deflection. Brickley picks it up. And a nice run out. That's back to 17 again. And it's been 17 to 20 all quarter. You know, if Josh can get this to 14, which is unlikely, but they could just get it to under 17. Thoughts might start creeping in now. But Tariq Gabaldi has two shots here to extend it back out to 19. Missed the first. And if Brian Murphy and Dylan Corkery can get a rebound here, watch for the leak outs from Dylan Brickley and Connor Sullivan. But the ever imposing Stephen Canning on the on the glass creates a loose ball and St. Aidan's punish Joshua Cullen with the two. Nice inside pass, Dylan Corky off the high post again. Physical drive by Matt Tracy. And you can see the tire bodies of Klaus come now. And they're just struggling to track back into the high post areas where long defensive rebounds can be got. That's it, exactly. But like you mentioned earlier, you'd imagine if the, if the league got down to 12 or 14, we'd see a new burst of energy from them. And there we go. Back to 15. Nice coast to coast by Conor Sullivan. And there you go. There's the burst of energy. Nearly got it. Brian Ashton with the nice spins. This is the part possession for Klaus to call him now. And a nice drive by Brian Murphy. And that's back to 13. This is what we spoke about, Jason. Here we go now. Can Dylan make his first three of the game? And he does. Blocks it back to 10. Reminiscence of last year's final, Jason. Is it going to happen? Time out by St. Aidan's. Join us for the last exciting four minutes of 43 seconds.
So, we're back to the last four. 35 now, and let's see where the next score will come from. That's a wide open three for St. Aidan's. Nice rebound by Brian Murphy. Should have really given it up. Big possession for Claudia Cullum here now. Getting out of the big mat, our cor short corners. Big three by Connor Sullivan. Miss rebound by Stephen Canning. Nice deflection out of bounds by Brian Murphy. Way to track back on the press. So 4 or 4 remaining, still 66-76. Both teams in foul trouble are in the bonus. So for every foul from here on in, Jason, we're going to see both teams go to the line. That's it, it could come down to that, Paul. As we can see, both teams can score in spades when they get going. It's going to be very, very interesting. Four minutes and four seconds here. Nice step back by Matt Tracy. Huge three by Tracy. Brian Murphy trying to answer it, and he does! <laughs> this, hang on to your seats, people. Hang on to your seats. Nice skip pass. Nice block by Dylan Corkery. And the save by Tariq. And Connor Sullivan with a nice deflective play off of Brian Ashton. Ten points now, Paul, but for Clash to Cullum, they, they, they can't tread baskets. they got to go after it now to try to get some stops. No better boys. Those Cork lads are tough. <laughs> What's interesting now is that they've gone away from the high post. Might have forced that last shot there. I think they could have done a better job, all right. They've been doing a great job in the high post. But that's Dylan Corkery. Fouled out now. So with the Helter Skelter going on, a foul by Dylan Corkery and Matt Tracy to the line for two. Makes the first. Makes the second. And we're now in the four possession game. So 12 point lead. Four possession game. And they got back to the high post. Brian Murphy was in there. Did the brick lead and he go to the line. And what's interesting with both teams now, they're fouling shooters, good free throw shooters. So we'd be expecting from here on in if they keep fouling good free throw shooters that they'd be cutting the lead in. Well, I think it's more of a case if you're a good free throw shooter than attack the basket. So fortunate. And what's interesting here now is both coaches only have one timeout left each as well. So using that wisely is going to be interesting. Now Trace in the ball with a backdoor pass to Brian Ashton. Trace in the ball again. Loses it. And Jack Murphy with the two. Back to 10, straight back in their pressure defense. Cause of problems. Can they recover now? Has, have they got enough energy to cause another turnover? Getting deep into the shot clock. Nice defense by Dara. Good deflection by Brian Murphy, but where's his team to help him out? I think nice offensive early. rebounds has been the story of this game, Paul. Edens, St. Edens have gotten second, third, four chances. That's certainly it. Brian Murphy with the missed three. A good look. Great deflection by Conor. Oh, that's just unfortunate. You can't fault it for the effort.
So 148 remaining. St. Nain's up 14. And regardless of what happens here, Jason, I think it's been a fitting game to end the, a great week of schools cup basketball. Absolutely. You know, we've seen some really, we've seen some great games here all week, but this one, I think, just about caps it off. And we return for the last 145. And we're back. So 140 left. Kosha comes 71. And a reaching foul. On Jack Murphy. I was saying Tariq. To the line. And the, the thing about this now is if, if Kosha comes key foul, and this could be a 20 point game, and you know, people say it wasn't a good game, whatever, but it's been a tremendous basketball game. Two completely different sides, playing it two completely different ways, and it's just been a great spectacle for the for the sport. Yeah, it's been a great game. I mean, anybody that's been here with us today watching the game will, will testify to that. Nice drive by Dara, off his foot. Josh comes in with what has, what has worked from most of the game. Staying in their press. Nice deflection by Conor Sullivan. And Matt Tracy with the three. And that'll finish it off. Connor Sutton bringing the ball on the floor. And they're trapping a little bit now. Good drive by Brian, extra kick. And a nice drive by Dylan Brickley staying with it. I think St. Aidens will just finish it out now. Just turn it in now, and this is becoming a 20 point game. Nice rebound by Brian Ashton. And a foul by Jack Murphy. Josh Cohn will finish out this last tough shot by Connor. And Matt Tracy is going to hold it and finish out the last 10 seconds. So, Jason, really good game. 
Excellent. No cost coming for their lack of size. Put up a really great performance. And look, we see all the handshakes out there. A bit of respect at the end. It was a fantastic game with two great, really competitive teams. So, well done to St. Aidan's. Commiserations to Klaus de Cullum. And I'm sure both teams will, will feel that they gave everything and uh, they, they certainly did. Certainly, Paul. I think both teams can hold their head up and say they had a great, great game of basketball. They did everybody proud here. Yep. Great, great week for schools basketball. Um, for all our Subway-sponsored games. And um, hope to see you back soon for the league finals.